Ahoy, wonders, and welcome back to the table. We're here. We're back. We are ready to do things, potentially. Mm -hmm. Or die trying. I mean, I would like to, hopefully. Well, last we left our heroes, uh, you guys found Skrung. Uh, he was hidden off in a place he likes to call the Bluey Camp. Woo, Skrung! Uh, he has been left here uh, due to the fact that his uh, teleportation to his realm did not go as planned, and he was transported from one side of the continent to the other. Unbeknownst to him, though. So for the longest time, he's been running an operation here with a bunch of kobolds, tricking them into getting him at least some way to reopen the portal to get him at least off-planet and not so much off-continent. Mm -hmm. However, that's where you guys came in. When you guys showed up, uh, you were caught in the middle of their operation to find some more doodads and gadgets to charge up the machine. Uh, Skrung has told you that, unfortunately, the Blar guests have uh, taken a little bit of a shelter towards where the temple is that houses the Realm Gate. And that's where you guys are off to uh, take care of. You're going to clean up house, get rid of the Blar guests, and try to find some way to operate this gate once again. From Mac, we also learned that they are being led by a two-headed wolf-like demon beast. Yep. Very uh, which you which you assume is just a very above average Blargas because they are uh, goblin demonoids that can transform into wolves. So, to the most of your knowledge, that's what you believe is happening here. But along the way, and with the help of uh, one of the uh, Bluey's original leader, Renfang, uh, who you have promised that once Skrung is out of here, he can be leader once again, so he's begrudgingly helping you. Uh, you have discovered that there was a human encampment here that was exploring ruins about some kind of spider creature. You don't know if that will come into play here, but that's been trickling in as you've been going along. Uh, you have just finally exited out of a camp where a bunch of blog guests were torturing the poor souls of this expedition. Sent uh, most of them back to hell via massive fireball. Yep. Uh, Skrung has given you information that blog guests can... Uh, can be returned back to their realm, or back to the realm of hell, if they are uh, baptized in flame that is much taller than them. Uh, and uh, <laughs> Morgan here uh, spoke to the dead, found out what was going on, but then also decided, hmm, you know what we need here? Skeletons. So now you have an undead humanoid skeleton walking around with you. I call her Linda. And she can't speak, of course, because skeletons don't have vocal cords or lungs. Or tongues. So all you get is... <laughs> and that's where we left off. Bone shattering. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so at this point, you guys return back onto the road. Uh, there's very little left to do with this camp. Uh, Ren Fang uh, leads you back onto the road where you guys were walking. Wake's just consistently side-eyeing Linda like... Gonna talk about this? No. Okay. Just we'll keep walking. <laughs> she won't talk to me, so I suppose she's just Morgan's responsibility. What's there to talk about? The funny bone man over here's got some kind of necroma uh, necromancy going on. Said yeah, Scrum. pretty much. Hey, I thought an extra set of hands would come in handy. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I, I suppose they will. Uh, L Linda. Linda. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Lin as you call her, Linda. Like, extra pair of hands, you just, like, watch as, like, a bony hand caresses Wake's chin. <laughs> <laughs> as he's talking, an extra pair of hands. Uh, <laughs> Linda, an important thing I've learned on this side of society she is It turns that... its entire head towards you back around. <clears throat> an important thing I've learned in society from since, you know, joining it is, uh, turns out people in appreciate their personal space and not having it, you know, invaded. So just be careful when we're somewhere in public with other people. You know, in all honesty, I think she's actually fascinated by you. She was a scholar before she died. Really? What, what's so fascinating about me? Let me ask. <laughs> Touch. So, you like a fish man, eh? It's okay. <laughs> Come on, work with me here. Ah, fine. I hold the skeleton's hand. Then you hear voices. Okay, there we go. Look, I know you're. F I know you were a scholar before you died, but can you don't have to caress the fishman's face. The last thing I remember was eating fish before I died. Oh. I figured that was the dream being relived once again. No. 
So I shouldn't eat the giant fish? No, you shouldn't. The fish is here to help. The fish is here for vengeance. The fish has a name, Morgan. <laughs> yeah, so you're only getting you're only getting you're only getting like this in a one-way scenario. So you're only getting Morgan's side. My eyes just narrow. <laughs> Shh, he could be talking about another fish. She's dead. I gotta keep it simple. She turns and looks over at Chromagill. Saute mushroom. No, that's no, no, no. See, she pointed no. at me. Maybe I'm the fish. <laughs> I mean, you have gills. She, she, uh. was, she was thinking about her last meal before she died. Ironic. Oh. But I'm telling her no. I'm telling her no. She's yeah, not, no. Yeah. She's not going to try and eat us while we're, you know. She looks How would she? She looks down at Sprung. Know. She reaches for your weapon on your side. I, that, that, no. No. Do you want vengeance or not? Have you ever done this before, Morgan? No, I haven't, clearly. Ooh, exciting. So, yes. <laughs> also... <laughs> now, do you want vengeance or not? There's a reason I brought you back to the realm of the living. Is there? I thought I was just sleeping. Oh, you wish you were just sleeping, from what I saw. You hear sobbing, but you don't fucking... It, there's no way to physically show it. There, there. <laughs> <laughs> you guys just watch us now. Morgan's caressing the face of a fucking skeleton. Perfect See, time. it's not so great when it happens to you, now is it? <laughs> there is internal crying that none of you can hear except for Morgan. She's crying, guys. Give me a minute. Oh my god, a crying skeleton. Great. All she, the dumb things I've heard of all day, says Skrung. Well, this person was torn to shreds before she died. Oh, so. boo fuckity hoo, he holds up his prosthetic arm. Yeah, but you're still alive. Am I? This feels like a fucking nightmare. Is he always like this? Wow. Yes. Oh. Huh. That's a, that's a heavy, that's some good philosophy there. Anyways. <clears throat> Look, just bear with us for a little bit, all right? All right? I'm still, like, patting her hand. Come on. Persuasion. <sighs> Persuade the skeleton, Brian. Uh, yeah, persuade your magical slave. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very strong-willed skeleton. That is a 13. Well, I mean, she's tethered to this realm because of you, so she can. She the only thing she can do is comply. She has nothing else against it. <laughs> That's what I thought. Let's keep going. All right. Onward toward the tomb of terror. That's what I'm calling it. That's fair. Uh, that, yeah, that Scrong just looks at you. Yes, says yeah. the DM. Yeah. No, that's fair. Like, Scrong just looks at you. Nah, that's fair. Years of history and the name of this hallowed ground, but sure, spooky doom. Dude, who the f like, Scrong just looks, Scrong looks at the camera. Dude, I'm a fucking goblin. I don't give a shit about all this history. I just want out. <laughs> just, let me, like, just let him go. Pretty sure the only people that might have cared about the history are. Boop. Points at Linda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, you can try and ask her to see if you can pull any information out of it. Yeah, that's a good idea. Again, grabbing her hand, lingua mortis. What now? I have questions. Me too. Of course you do. <sighs> Did you find out anything interesting before your untimely demise? I mean, you guys were clearly on an expedition on this isle. Yes, because we were hired by the drow of the kingdom off to the uh, to the uh, e to the west of here. Hmm. So this was a drow-funded expedition. Indeed, they didn't want to leave their cavern, so they brought people from the surface to do this for them. That makes sense with the spiders. Hmm. Find anything interesting that we should know about? No. The only thing I heard of, the only thing we had to go on is that they spoke of a beast called the uh, Chuadenda. 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 Chroma. Oh, I'm I sorry. Say. I apologize. It's uh, Chuadensha. I Chuadensha. apologize. Ah, that makes all the difference. With, yes. Uh, <laughs> I was if, I, yeah. if I'm trying to see if I recognize this name, would that be a nature or a history? Uh, for you, that would be a history check. Cool. Well, I got a nat 20. So uh, Nice. How, do I know? <laughs> Go, Chromagill. Chuadensha, you start trying to like parse that through your mind, and then like you start like trying to speak it out like in a druid druidic tongue. All of a sudden, it slowly starts piecing together. You don't get 
you don't get like the actual like entire phrase of what this thing is, but the one word you do get is many. Like that word is very predominant in the title. With a name like that, I don't think we're talking about a, a singular entity. It's sort of like a multiple or an army, a many. You've a heard region. of something like this? Well, the dr uh, she keeps speaking to you. Yeah. The drow never spoke about uh, the Chuadentia as a beast of one. It was a beast of many. Whether that was in the physical or in the religious sense, we have no idea. Hmm. It's just a it's it's a term that's had multiple iterations and and possible meanings, but usually just means more than one. Hmm. And if you remember the tablet, it was a many-legged creature that was sitting on top of a pole. So it could have something to do with uh, its limbs, maybe? Possibly. We are also possibly on the trail of a multiple-headed uh, Blargast, so it could, could also possibly be referencing that. Not entirely sure. Uh, Linda speaks to you again. The Blargasts were a new factor. They were not supposed to be a part of this. No, oh, she's telling me that the Blargasts are new. Hmm. Well, then okay. Probably rules that one out. Yeah. But very possibly our multiple-legged figure then. I mean, but it's the, very possible the, that these things are connected in another way. Though Maybe the weird thing, also looking for it. The weird thing about this entire like, all the writings, all the artwork and whatnot, is that this was all made by Yan T. So what does it have to do with Drow? She has no idea. Hmm. Okay, so according to Linda, the etchings and 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 the drawings, it's all done by Yan T. I hey. mean, I know Drows have a have a thing with arachnids, but. Why the snake kin? Well, maybe they were warring over territory for some time, and this creature just happened to be the thing that held the boundary. Hmm. In any case, uh, Linda believes that uh, believes that this was what they were looking for. Whether they were looking for something that was dead, the existence of this thing, uh, they did have a couple of adventurers in their party to try to keep them safe, but. That all went south very quickly. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't... They weren't prepared for a spider-like creature. They weren't... Uh, they were prepared for a spider-like creature. They weren't prepared for a bunch of Blar guests to show up, so they had nothing infernal to help them with. Mm. Yeah. This was literally a bug hunt. Hmm. Well, either way, we should probably keep our guard up. I don't think we're the only ones hunting these bugs, or at least not the only ones Linda in the Linda will say one more thing. Uh, she does know that... Uh, there was a weapons cache for taking care of insect-like creatures, not for the Blargasts, but she has no idea where the adventurers kept all that stuff. Shoot. Hmm. Well, they have taken the same path. I'm assuming Morgan is just trying yeah. to... Yeah, 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 yeah. They, they kept it close to the chest for the Adventurers Guild, not for, not for anyone else on the expedition. So mm -hmm. the researchers were kept to themselves, while the Adventurers were just like, all right, this is our deal, we'll keep to ourselves. If something comes after them, shoot to kill. Mm -hmm. Did we... Um, in the camp, was there any evidence that some of the people there were adventurers while others were researchers, or was... This you never uh, you never looked at any of the bodies up in the I mean, trees. We kind of burned most of them. Yeah. yeah. So any evidence that would have been there kind of like turned to ash and went away. There were there was the uh, pile of corpses, which was part of Linda's uh, whole deal, which you took care of. Mm -hmm. uh, there were more tattered notes and a lot of shredded up pieces of paper and a lot of broken into like rations and supplies. So the Blar guests got into that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, unfortunately, because you banished them all, any materials that was with them went with them. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, shoot. There goes that advantage. Yeah, better than fighting a whole group of those things, though, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, Ren Fang turns and looks to you all. There will be more. Usually. Oh, yeah. My tribe had found at least a score of 20 to 25 of them in the in the uh, in the temple. Mm. Not including their alpha or if there are any others hidden or reinforcements. I hate to say it, but I don't think I have enough lantern fuel for that kind of endeavor. Yeah, and unfortunately we don't have an, a platoon of pirate ghosts this time. Yeah. We just have Linda. Ren Fang knows where traps are. That will be useful. 
And if we can maybe find this adventurer's cash, I think that might help even the playing field a little bit as well. Yeah. So what is your plan helpful. then? Search for the cash or head to the temple? Hmm. The problem is we're we're still we have no idea where to look for this cache of, of equipment. It's it would be very helpful, but at the same time, dividing up our time and resources to look for it might not be the best option we have. If we already know, if Renfang already knows where some traps are, that might be all we need to at least get get our foot in the door and get some get some distractions going. Possibly we can just slip in unnoticed and get past mm. a few of them. Well, tell you what, those of you that need to shore up your gear or anything like that, give me five minutes to scout this area with Scrung. Maybe we can find some, maybe some semblance of a trail that these guys might have taken. Yeah, because they couldn't have hid the cache too far away from the camp. They wouldn't have, I mean, honestly, if they had hidden it far away from the camp, it would have completely undid the purpose of it to fight the things off. Yeah. So if we can find maybe a semblance of where they were traipsing about, we might be able to find our way to it. Linda, quicker. like, waggles her hands for you to take. <sighs> Aw, it's cute. It's a girl. Ah! Just punch the... There you go. That, that's what it sounds like when you touch the undead. It's like punching the microphone. <laughs> Uh, she tells you that, uh, the adventurers that they hired had a second agenda, though they never told them what it is. So they were not only here to protect us, but they were looking for something else. Hmm. Well, it looks like the adventurers had a side quest. Kind of like the adventurers are to us. Hey. Hmm. Hey. hey. <laughs> 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 uh, so... Uh, she can, like, probably point out in the direction where she believes she last saw the adventurers, but that's about as much of a clue that she can give you. All right. Um, I'll take that better than anything. It's better than circling the area. Mm -hmm. Okay. Point. Let me roll an investigation check for Linda. All right. Uh, she points... In the general direction to behind where the campsites, uh, where the in, like tents are. So where that cage is and the tent, uh, it looks like there's a broken up path that leads behind it. But because of the Blar guest attack, that's all been tattered. So it almost just looked like it was regular brush. All right. Well, I'm going to uh, do a quick survival check, I'm assuming, to see if I can find any tracks from the adventurers. Something that they might have like cut a trail through anything that looks like disturbed jungle. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I'll let you go ahead and keep that, but I'll explain something to you before that. All right. Uh, the, it is just like, it's already disturbed. The Blargast right. fucked this place up, so it's kind of disturbed in the back throughout the entire way. But if you are looking for anything in particular, like... Human boot tracks. Yeah, like some, something of that nature. Uh, there's a kind of jumbled mess where the uh, where the pathway leads. However, what's your roll? Uh, my roll, 17 plus six, thir uh, 23. 23. Uh, there does seem to be one set of footprints that doesn't look like it's a wolf. It doesn't look like it's a canine boot, uh, a canine uh, footprint. And there's not a lot of boots or any like other like small feet uh, that have, that come from around the area. However, there are talons that come from the east. Talons, almost like Drake's. Huh. I think I got something. I mean, it might just be more wildlife, considering. But hmm. I got some Drake tracks heading out this way. I quickly gesture at Lindo. <clears throat> <clears throat> Do you remember what the adventurers looked like? Did you have, were one of them, did they happen to be a dragonborn? I'm gonna, I, I have to roll for her since she is undead, yeah. so this is like a kind of out of body experience for her. <laughs> yeah, uh, asking you to remember with the, with the role dreams. she got, unfortunately, the only thing she remembers is just the people that she hung out with, more, all the researchers more than the adventurers. Mm -hmm. The adventurers were put together by someone else, the head researcher of the entire expedition. Okay. Uh, though, I'll go ahead and say this with this role. She does remember that, uh, the head researcher did complain that one of the adventurers dipped into rations a little bit too much because of their companion. 
Mm. They might have been using this thing to track, is what I'm thinking. Could be what that cage is about. <clears throat> Probably. You don't think the drakes we encountered before were the companions of these adventurers, do you? I'd rather not think about that. <laughs> <laughs> I just couldn't help but stare at the camera when you said that. <laughs> <laughs> just, oh. Wouldn't that be ironic? Anyway. <laughs> would be pretty upsetting considering how they're just much starved dogs. I put into not killing it. <laughs> so yeah, you have a uh, Drake. Uh, you have Drake prints that come to the e that uh, go out to the east. Well, I don't think it'll kill too much of our time if we take a little detour. Okay, I need everyone to roll me a survival check. Mm -hmm. Roll for Scrung. Scrung can't survive for his shit. Uh, 19. 16. 15. And a 17 for Renfang. Uh, that actually kind of makes sense for Renfang, considering that Drake's draconic. He's kind of, like, got a little bit of a head start into figuring out where these things would do and what they would track. And Wake is an ironically good hunter for a monk. Yep. So, you guys kind of, like, follow the same path until Renfang kind of, like, stops you. You... Walked for maybe a good 10, 15 minutes. The brush here no longer is that scatterbrained, like, uh, like adventures have been through here. Like, this, th it hasn't been ruffled by any sort of uh, other life here. Uh, Renfang, like, kind of, like, pulls his hand out with the hilt of his greatsword to stop you, and he points his sword over to a tree. With your roll, you're able to see that the prints go up into the tree. Uh. And this tree... Uh, kind of like falls over to the side. It's like a really elongated tree and the branch arches over. Uh, there are no more tracks here, so it looks like the drakes took to the trees at this point. But with your guys' rolls after seeing that, you can now see that a lot of the foliage that would have been broken up by a large draconic hound-like creature is now up in the trees. Uh, a lot of the wood is scratched and it follows a certain pathway over towards a small cliffside. They're tree running. We either found a scratching post or followed a trail. Well, they kept going this way. They must have needed to take the trees for some reason. Maybe they were avoiding something. Uh, as you continue, uh, do you follow the uh, do you follow the trail of the tree? Yeah, I go up the tree. Oh, you go up the tree. Okay. Yeah. To uh, continue their trail. Roll me a deck save. Deck save. Ooh la la. Natural twenty. Natural nice. twenty. Uh. As you get up, you feel something kind of like tug at the tip of your hair and pull away. As you look up, there's a viper staring at you from the tree that took a bite at you. No. Bad snake. It opens its mouth. I'm going to grab it, like, by the back of the head. You know how snake handlers do it? Just Yeah. Uh, is this animal handling, or are you trying to attack? It's technically both. <laughs> I am reflexively <laughs> stopping it from being able to strike. He is handling the Well, because I, I would grant mine. you the animal handling if you're not trying to kill it. If you're All just right, trying I, to, like, I, I'm going to do it. it slowly until it makes sense to be fast. So that is, I guess, animal handling. Sure. Give it a roll. Jesus. <laughs> it's your totem. <laughs> it just kept going. Uh, animal handling, that is a 19. 19? You kind of, like, wave your hand in the distance and, like, try to, like, make it go towards oh, the... Oh, I know. I'll distract it with my regular hand and then get it with my ghost yep, hand. Yep, that's, that pretty, much how, that's pretty much how I was going to fluff oh, it. Oh, it's... Oh. Ah! Yeah, the snake, like, kind of just, like, recoils, like, trying to figure out, like, why the fuck it can't move. Ah. This thing's poisonous as hell. Careful. Probably. Well, well now you hold it. Yeah, hold <laughs> it. By the head. You can't bite me. Not like it's that. Not nipping. Also, I don't have flesh there, so... Haha, -ha, stupid snake. <laughs> can't poison a ghost. Unless it's a ghost snake. Are you going to keep holding on to it? Because that's a grapple check. I mean, I'm awake. I'm just going to decapitate it. <laughs> okay, roll the hit. <laughs> roll the hit. Oh, no. This, go this snake has silver fangs. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right. Uh, rolling to hit. It's 19 to hit. Yeah, sure. You just, like, lop it. You cut its head clean off. <sighs> ah, that'll be good eating for later. Coil it up on the belt. <laughs> cool. All right, so you guys continue to follow the path. Uh, the scratch marks continue to be... Uh, the scratch marks continue along the tree until you reach that small cliffside, 
there is a not a relatively huge drop, maybe like a forty foot drop deeper down into the uh, woods. Mm -hmm. So it's just like there's a really fucking vertical drop here at this point. The rocks are jagged, so climbing down here, it is possible. But one false move, and you're fucking hitting some sharp rocks on the way down. Uh, the mm -hmm. one tree that you're on actually lips over, so there is like a twenty foot like grace period you could walk out on on the tree without having to roll anything. Uh, however, once again, something sticks to your arm, and everyone else kind of, like, gets this feeling, too. Like, something's, like, trying to grab a hold of you, but you just can't physically, like, explain what it is. If This feels more like something's nipping at your insides, yeah. and it's, like, sticky. It's this weird, like, it's not, hum like, you feel like it's the humidity getting to you at first. So at this point, I need everyone to roll me a nature check. 18. Scrong got a nat one, so fuck him. Same with Wake. Natural wonders! Woo! Uh, I got a 12. Uh, 12 and what? 18. 18? Uh, it, this actually hangs on your coat, and you feel like your coat is a part of you when you're being pulled away with this. You, you, you feel it's the, you feel like it's probably the humidity getting to you, but then you stop and turn around, and you notice that something gleams in the piercing sunlight through the canopy, it's webbing. Guys, get a God, God, I feel itchy. Don't st st sticky. What? I think we're in a very big web. Look at it from the angle of the sunlight. Roll a perception check, you two. 15. Seventeen. You both see it. There are very, very thin, but they are very elongated strands of webbing. Oh. It's it's not where the base of the webbing goes, and it looks like it goes to the cliff, but then arches down along the cliff face. This is a very elaborate structure. We're following the Drake tracks all the way out here. Are they? Where are they? The Drake tracks end at the at the branch at the twenty foot arching. I think whatever made this web is playing go fish with the wildlife. All right. Well, I'm gonna go do something really stupid. Hold on. Oh, I love it when he does this. I'm going to work my way out to where I see the Drake tracks end to try to get a better look at everything around. Okay. Uh, you may do so as you walk out towards it. Uh, you, you are now at the very edge of the tree branch where the tracks are. You probably have, like, another five feet before you have to start making rolls to get anywhere else. Uh, you are standing there. You're looking around at the tracks. You are now overlooking the cliff face. You can, if you drop from here, it's a 50-foot drop. Uh, what's the, what's at the bottom? Is that, like, just a gorge, or is it ocean? Uh, it drops down, and then it goes into more vegetation. So the forest continues when it hits the ground. Okay. Uh, and, from where and you're no, and no sign of the Drakes or anything from this uh, standpoint. No, but you do see the ziggurat from here. Oh, well, I see the temple from here. That's good. I don't see. I'm gonna roll a perception check. Okay. It's a ten. I don't see any spiders. Maybe. <laughs> nope. You see nothing. I see nothing. It's just empty. Uh, you guys, I think we're safe. <laughs> you guys are overlooking the cliff face at this point, yes? Or are you staying away from the cliff? I s I'm going to slowly kind of make my way, not trying to make any erratic movement. Uh, roll a stealth. Okay. That is an eight, my good man. As you step upwards, your boot gets lost on the way over, and it's stuck on the floor now. Uh-oh. Well, that's What's up? Oh, my boots stuck. Oh no! You your foot. You popped your foot oh. out of it. Oh. Your boots there on the floor, but you don't see the string. I can just go get you don't it see where it's tethered. It's just right there. I just I'm try and roll perception to. Uh, oh. Okay. oh, what are you doing then? <laughs> yeah, Chromagill, I was just gonna do an old evens or odds. If it was evens, he reaches for it to help his good friend Morgan. <laughs> Got an eighteen, so he's going for it. 
lift the boot up. All right. No, no, it's right here. Okay, so without stealth, I'm going to roll something here. Go ahead. All right, cool. They're uh, looking for meat. They're <laughs> up the wrong tree with Chromagill. Roll a athletics check. That is a 23. Man, that, that new dice is doing good for you. It's healthy. You pick it up with no problem. There you go. Oh, thank you. It is sticky as fuck. It is now stuck to your hands. Both of your hands. <laughs> you are now no! stuck together. <laughs> <sighs> what a wacky sitcom scenario we have. <laughs> yeah, and your hand's now stuck on the boot as well. We'll call it Strong Gill. Okay. <laughs> Morgan, how important to you is this boot? <sighs> Why? Well, this is going to hamper us when uh, things get dangerous. Clearly. And there's a 15 perception to show me anything. Uh, the, the heel of the boot, you see the string that's attached to it. It hits the floor and then hits a 90 degree angle and then goes down another 90 degrees along the cliff face. And I think, kind of jostles a little bit, doing this is ringing a dinner bell for something. So as you say that, you actually <laughs> see the entire like string that you're touching just jerk with it. Yeah, like that. Uh, so I think I might just crush this boot. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. <laughs> uh, with an athletics of. Oh wait, hold up. This is hmm, maybe not. No, this would be an object. I would say. I are, we, are we going to siege a boot? <laughs> I'm going to allow it. You can siege. You can siege the boot. <laughs> well, I didn't get much better. Oh, uh, but that's going to be a 14. I mean, I mean you. I mean, you crush his boot just fine. <laughs> the sticky webbing, however. <laughs> yeah. The, the, now you. Now you are touching hands stuck together. Oh no. Hmm. All right. Well, this didn't go as I had hoped. Hey, uh, Wake, yeah. you think you could, you got that elemental stuff. Could you maybe, like... Burn the webbing? Or freeze it or something? I can do my best. I'm mostly good with water. But let's see what I can do with webs. <laughs> you turn around to face them? Yeah, I do. Okay, cool. Do, 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 turn around real quick. Just jump on the branch. <laughs> give me a deck save with disadvantage. Do, 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 do. Uh, the disadvantage was a 13. When you turn around, something grabs the entire back of your body. You feel like your shoulder blade's being yanked almost off the tree. All right. No, you're still there. Yeah, yeah you're hanging on for dear. You're on that five foot inch. All right, all right, be right there. Everything okay? Maybe. I think he's about to be dead. And I'm up. You're still there, but this thing, whatever this thing, wherever this is going, you feel it tugging, and it's going off the cliffside. Okay. Uh, cliffside. Bleh. Words. I'm just going to move forward slowly. slowly. Athletics. And oh god, it's so heavy. Uh, that is 19. It keeps you in place. Oh god. Okay, you're gonna need to come towards me. <laughs> How does this work? Oh. Uh, all right, both of you need to roll me in athletics with disadvantage. Wait, wait, Linda, Linda. I think this is only going to make things worse, Morgan. I don't know. Hold on. Well, now Linda's just standing there. Don't you need to touch her hand to understand oh, her? Only to talk to her, because I don't have rapport spores. You know what? You know what? You're right. That that is a bad idea. You can still order her to do things. <laughs> I know, but all she has is a club. I'm open to suggestions, Wake. I mean, we can go there later, but right now we're a little predisposed. Not that kind of club! Oh. How close is Renfang? <laughs> Renfang is just sitting there, folding his arms, watching and laughing, almost like he knows what's happening. And Scrug <laughs> never left the camp, just smoking his <laughs> cigars. I'll be back. <laughs> oh, Scrug's still there with okay. you guys. He just didn't... Go uh, uh, to the cliffside. He's like, "What are you doing, you idiot? You'll fall off." What? All right. Okay. I have. I have an idea. Okay. So, so you have you have Scrung and you have Renfang at your disposal. At this Scrung, point. Renfang, either one of you. I'm going to yank as hard as I can while Morgan yanks in the other direction. We will stretch out a 
thin bit of web, slice it with everything you've got. I'd like to point out that that's relatively similar to how... <laughs> Ren Fang just, like, smiles holding his great sword. Oh. Yeah, sure, good luck. Perfect, that should work. Gromagill has little fear of this. He, he has a weird body that might regrow a limb if he needs to. Just take a couple hundred years, maybe. Oh, no. Oh, then I'm already dead. I mean, Skrung just, like, eh. Like, takes a cigarette, like, lights it out. Yeah, I can do that. He is a rogue. Okay. He's an acrobatics rogue, actually. Hmm. Okay. I'm guessing it would probably be some sort of athletics to just be like, all right, and pull! Yep. Okay. All right, now, Morgan, if... If I completely overpower you, I'm just going to yank you with me. So we're going to have to do this somewhat equally. <laughs> hmm. Wouldn't that suck? Sure. If, wouldn't that suck if you lost a limb? Skrung says, holding a knife in his hands and flicking it. Yeah. No one in this party knows anything about that. I'm sure. Oh, whatever. I have a hole in my chest. It honestly wasn't that bad. Here we go. Oh. Uh, uh, modified twenty for my uh, fifteen. Just a flat fifteen. Despite Morgan not having the physical strength that uh, Chromagill does, <laughs> you, you guys are capable to, like, keep composure, and you oh. realize that you're pulling a little bit too hard for uh, Morgan, so you back off a little mm -hmm. bit, leaving, like, a three-inch space away from the boot. All <gasps> right, there's your spot. And roll for Skrung. Holy shit, Skrung, that's right. And with your dex and finesse, motherfucker got a 19 on a 10. Okay, that works. Uh... I'm gonna roll 1d4, see which side he cuts first. Uh, Morgan has been cut free. Uh, hey, there you go. Your hands are still clapped together. On well, a boot. I mean, they still work, I guess. If you're now wielding boot. If you grab it's it, if you- It's just a small slab of leather now. <laughs> uh, if you uh, try to grab anything or try to use anything with your hands, it will be at disadvantage until you get this stuff off. My hands are stuck together? Yes. Yeah, you were crushing the boot. Yeah, you were crushing the boot, so you clapped your hands together. Damn. So you kind of, like, handcuffed yourself. Well, all right. <laughs> I, uh... I guess this will work for now. <clears throat> Tries to just Athletics. tear it with his hands. Yep. That's a 12. 12. Oh, boy. Nope, still stuck together. Ah! Okay. Maybe that won't work. Uh, back to Wake. Yeah, right now I am like pulling out a dagger and just kind of reaching back <laughs> like a back scratcher trying to cut off whatever pulling between my shoulder Slight blades. Light of hands with disadvantage. All right, careful, careful. Couple of necessary fins are back there. Uh, Slight of hands, disadvantage, 18. Hmm, nice. With an 18, you begin to start carving at it. I need you to roll damage to cut. Slow and careful. Damage, all right. You are using a knife, using, I assume. Yeah, a dagger. Yeah, That's so roll that really damage. Have. Good thing I'm a martial artist. Uh, plus... It's nine damage to this thread. You cut one thread, but that was only enough to get rid of the left shoulder blade that it was attached to. Oh. Now it's on the right. All right, shift over. Uh, other hand. You can now use acrobatics instead of sleight of hand for this. Acrobatics. Good, because I have proficiency in that. Um, that's a modified 20. Yep. Uh, roll damage. And uh, that's 10 damage. 10 damage? You cut the other one. <laughs> ah, suck it, whatever that was. You turn to look around and see what it was. Uh, roll me a perception check. Uh, that is a... Nine. Nine? Wow. What a piss poor roll for this thing to get. You watch as one entire, like, a large, almost silo-like door of the entire cliff face flap across and go against the wall. Guys. You hey. saw it, didn't you? Good news, Wick. I think we're mostly free. What's What have you been up to? I think that whatever these are, are really good ambush predators. Clearly. Huh. Here, didn't I'm, I'm gonna make my way over to Chromagill now that I'm on Stealth. <laughs> make my way over to Chromagill now that I am unhindered. That is a 19. <laughs> 
you can feel the webbing as you're going across it, and you just, like, arch your, your feet just shy of the strings. And with that, you jump across and head over towards where Skrung and uh, Renfang is. They are nowhere near the webbing. Okay, Chromagill, show me your hands. I'm going to concentrate it so that it'll feel chilly. It might get cold for you. I don't know how to do damage with this yet. I'm whispering because I think these things might be able to hear me. Okay! You don't have that problem, I understand. Yes! Here we go. With his assistance, <laughs> you can do an athletics with advantage. All right. Make the webbing brittle. It's a 21. You okay. break it off easily. Ah, oh, there we go. Thank you. One of your fingers is stuck to the <laughs> other hand. Just, oh, I won't need it. It'll grow back. <laughs> Double finger. Yep. So, Wake, you might have saw what became of the drakes. Because uh, the moment that the entire, like, silo-like circle started to close off on the wall, there was something fuzzy alongside of it dragging inside underneath the silo door. So I think, um, are any of you familiar with trapdoor spiders? The seven in nature, I don't think I am. I would be surprised. I'm going to roll, say, roll an advantage for you. <laughs> I was about to say, do I really have to roll? <laughs> All right, that's that's a that's a nineteen. You just had to beat a ten. You know what it is. Ah, oh, yes, the trapdoor spider. Those things are scary, from what I understand. Yeah, this I think this is a really big one because it lives on the cliffside. Ooh, I've never heard of that. <laughs> Me either. I remember them kind of in the forest when I was growing up, and they're really good at hunting things. And but Clearly. this is a this is a different breed. And you say they use a door to hide? Yes. Uh, they're using part of the cliff face as a platform. Do you think if that door wasn't there anymore, they'd have more trouble ambushing things? Probably. Hmm. I mean, I can't imagine not. Ren Fang just chuckles. Oh, adventurers. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, hear me out. I've got a very big club. <laughs> and that's a very And I have big a very door. big brain idea, says Skrung. Let's not and say we did and instead go to the temple. Hmm. Do you think this weapons cache is that important? I mean, with how big the target of, for those weapons were, maybe? <laughs> I'm also going to say they probably didn't do their job if that is what's in there. <laughs> Good point. Fuck this place. <laughs> we did see the... We we've we've seen the temple that we're supposed to. That it's we're, off in the distance. Towards. You can see it. It's like another like hour or two's walk away from here. I suppose this is just starting an unnecessary fight for the potential of maybe weapons for dealing with this fight. I mean, this might not even be where they're hidden. This also could just be where possible. the dogs went off to die. Very 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 possible. Maybe we should just head towards the temple. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah. Hop back towards a safer path away from the webs. We got some snake meat out of it. So oh. I'm not going to call this a wash. Chromagill just, oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so foregoing that. Also, Morgan lost a boot. I lost boots once. Then I had new ones made. There That's a very a true succinct no story. No boots to boot happens. story with that one. <laughs> no boots about it. We just gotta find you some raptors. These things, comfortable and durable. Could I interest you in nice. giant, giant trapdoor spider shoes? <laughs> they could do spider walk. They could be you mean you fucking jest? That could be a thing. No, I know it could be a thing. <laughs> and that sounds like some pretty epic loop behind that door. <laughs> <laughs> but it would be dangerous, so let's perhaps make the better choice and just go for the temple. All right. So you guys we'll decide. Catch the spider on our way out. Yeah, you, you guys decide to <laughs> forego. Uh, Renfang tells you that there are two options for you to get to the temple. We could take the front side, which will be the faster way in. However, he does know that their kind uh, has actually been doing some uh, digging into the temple, and that's where he knows where the traps are, but it's behind the ziggurat. Well, that sounds like the way we have the most advantage of going in. Yep. But he will warn you, he knows only a few traps, not every single one that's in this place. That's all right. I can't expect I'd, I'd that. Rather, I'd rather know a few than, mm -hmm. than not. Okay. Yep. 
So that will instead take you guys, like, maybe three hours to get around. You get to the ziggurat, but then you notice... I need everyone to uh, roll me a perception check from the trees. So we scale down the cliff Ooh. face. That was a 12. A nat 20 for me, so I'm seeing it. Well, Chromagill definitely sees it. Wake got a modified 20. Scrung with a spyglass, only got a 17. Mm-mm. Uh... You, Chromagill, you notice that there are canine-like beings that just are laying across the uh, the staircase that leads up to the top of the temple. Uh, from your count, you could see at least ten of them. We've got a, a pretty big group of sleepy dogs just hanging out on the uh, on the on the temple stairs. Not not friendly dogs, not pet ones. Much more vicious looking. Demonic, even possibly. They're blargas. Yep, those are Blar guests. You know, I kind of figured. I just didn't want to assume. It wasn't positive. Uh, there are scri- there are uh, hier- hieroglyphics on the walls here. You can actually see there are little depictions. Uh, Morion T. Uh, not so much about this spider creature that you guys were looking at before. That seemed to be another piece that was taken off altogether. This one depicts just... Uh, unfortunately, with this one, you're going to have to roll history for everyone to try and piece this together. Let's see. I'm just going to go ahead and say no with a two. Does a nine tell me anything? We didn't exactly spec for intelligence. What etchings? Natural wonders. Uh, The etchings are so... uh, They're covered in foliage that it just looks like little doodles to every single one here. Uh, Ren Fang doesn't understand most of it either, even though he's been here before, so he just sees them as drawings. Skrung, these old cultures that celebrate art. Skrung doesn't give a shit. So, <laughs> there goes Skrung that. Skrung could read it fluently, but he doesn't care. Nothing against the Akka or people, but man, they aren't great at drawing. <laughs> uh, so you guys head around the back. I need everyone to roll a collective stealth check. Okay. Scrum got a, a flat 20. I got a 19. 13. Uh, 27. And Ren Fang. It's kind of hard for a fucking meat slab of a, a tiny little meat slab to go stealthing <laughs> a around. beefy kobold. Yeah, so he got a 15. All, to, all things considered collectively. Not bad. Yeah, you guys make it around with no incident whatsoever. <laughs> uh... There, uh, finally at that point, you start heading towards a dip behind the ziggurat, almost like there's a small little tunnel that's been carved out by someone, obviously by a small creature. Uh, Renfang tells you that this is exactly where his people started to dig at, however, it only fits small creatures, so for anyone else to get in through into the ziggurat, you're gonna have to roll an acrobatics check to get through. Chromagill, I don't know if you're gonna fit in that. I mean, I could. You you stick your foot near the hole and it, you, and it sinks. You don't even put your foot into it. It just disappears behind your girth. I don't. Yeah, I don't know if that's gonna work. Uh, it's like a Winnie the Pooh scenario. Perhaps I'll go in last and uh, just in case, perhaps open this opening just a bit more, and if that uh, you know, ruins the structural integrity, at least you'll all be you know, a- away from the wall. Theoretic. It won't ruin the uh, integrity of the ziggurat. It'll just ruin the integrity of the tunnel. Theoretically, shouldn't you go first, then, to make sure that you can get through? Because otherwise, you're just stuck out here and nobody can help you get out. You know, I suppose that's true. It's more I didn't want you to be collapsed inside with me, but I guess we can try. Uh, Wake will follow just behind Chromagill, using what minor earth bending he can do with his elemental attunement to try to sturdy the walls as he, as his calf inevitably widens it. Okay, Arcana check, and this would have been disadvantage. Acrobatics, just flat. Uh, 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 fifteen. Oh my god, uh, that is a eighteen. Eighteen. Yeah. With your combined efforts, uh, you don't. Like, you make it just wide enough for Chromagill to get most of his body in, and the rest of the way, he kind of just, like, you hear, like, this weird almost crunching, but it's his body kind of conforming around it and, like, molding with the tunnel All right. until it finally gets to his cap. So now there's just a giant bulbous head just, like, sitting there where the tunnel is. I th- I think I did it. 
but unfortunately, he's on the other side. You guys just here. Yeah, I'm, I'm following behind him in the tunnel, making sure that it stays formed. Uh, also, would my telepathy well, be mumbled? The, the tunnel is fine. Like, if the tunnel can now fit a moderate character, it's just that the fact that his cap is a giant circumference, it's kind of just, like, sitting there. So how are you guys going to fit him through that part? You have to get the rest of his head inside of the tunnel. It's like an umbrella covering covering the cap of a drink. All right, we're just going to have to shove, I guess. Give me a good little push, I guess. Please, well, my colorful we'll, we'll, my colorful on. gills are all I'm known for. Okay, first we'll, we'll, we'll tuck. We'll, we'll tuck. We'll tuck first. Why didn't you go head first, Chroma Gill? That would have been so much easier. Because I don't... I, I was never trained in diving. Fair enough. Okay, we're going to just... Dungeon diving. Gently and carefully tuck the gills around his head and then we'll give it a nice shove from the top. <laughs> Alright, so you begin to start, like, dressing up Chromagill just to be ready for like this. binding it down. <sighs> Let me roll something for Renfang. No, he's not a patient man. You just watch as you're, you're getting one side of Chromagill's Careful. side. Careful. And there's just Renfang just walks up. I appreciate how Too long he being. holds his giant fucking clawed foot up. You're doing this way because- ah! Uh, I'm gonna roll an athletics for him. <gasps> he rolled a two! So he does basically nothing. Boing! Yes, so Chromagill unfortunately <laughs> is taking. Bounces back. Chromagill takes three points of bludgeoning damage to the top of his head. Just have a giant. Would I have taken less if he had rolled higher? Uh, no, this was to get you through, but, so this is how this Instead, works. Instead, like, he just bludgeoned okay, your head. Well, he bludgeoned you in the head, but that wasn't because of his feet. You heard a sizable crunch, like a slab of your head being broken off. You don't know where, but that was painful. I you, you guys up front see probably about, maybe, <laughs> yeah, you see like a, maybe a, a pizza slice. A pizza slice about this big of his head has broken off. <gasps> Which, all things considered, is not that much of his head, but is... Is there a draft in this tunnel? <laughs> it stings. Wake is going to uh, <laughs> grab Renfang by the nape of his neck <laughs> and just stare him in the eyes and tell him to fucking control himself. Intimidation check. I'm gonna stare down this motherfucker. Uh, with my, my, my modicum of social skills. That's a 16. Not bad. With an intimidation check on Renfang, he got a 25. He just headbutts you in the nose and walks back. <laughs> good, <laughs> good talk. I well, go back to gingerly getting Chromagill through that hole. <laughs> Skrung's just sitting there. Oh boy. Uh, what are we gonna do with this? He like holds up Chromagill's fucking broken piece. Do we'll, with what? We'll, we'll mend it later. Don't worry. <laughs> okay, so uh, who's gonna help him? Because right now it's only Wake doing this at this point. Uh, I assume what I'm doing is sleight of hand, just. Uh, Gently. no, this would be medicine. Oh, medicine to fit him through the hole? Okay. Well, I guess to, I'm to, using to not... anatomy, yeah. Yeah. Modified 20. Modified 20? Pretty yeah. good. Knowing that if you Plus bend three. my cap too far, it'll just snap. Yeah, you kind of like, you, you find, you, you like kind of like feel around where his head is and you feel like there's a, there there's a pivot point where you can like squeeze your hand down and flow the rest of his cap in so it's like you're closing the umbrella. And now that there's a massive wedge taken out, that does loosen it up a bit, I guess. Yep. Uh, all right. Ooh, part of my cap is tender. Ow. Yeah, we'll we'll figure that out in a, a well, sec here. Now, now it just looks like there's a little bit of a bulge, like kind of just like at the tip in the center of the hole. Uh, maybe a good shove will get him through. All right. Morgan, you want to help me out here? Yeah, let's do this. Just two hands on top of the head. Yep. And One, the... two, three. Uh, should I just roll athletics with advantage? No, yes. Say, yes. Okay. Yeah. Assisting him. Then that is eighteen. Eighteen. You hear <laughs> as he like slides through. Who? I think that did it. Uh, 
You hear, you hear, Cro like, you only hear it in your head, but you watch as Chromagill disappears into the darkness. You hear, <laughs> Chromagill, you hit the floor after like a five second fall. Do I take damage from that? Nope. Okay. Because you kind of like pinballed along the tunnel. <laughs> Hey, it's a bit of a bumpy first step, but, uh... Hey, Renfang, over here. How deep is that? Just looking down into it. There was a ladder. Well, I don't see it anymore. Because he's a big creature. It was only accommodating for my kind. Hmm. Hmm. I shove Renfang in. <laughs> <laughs> athletics versus athletics, I'm guessing. Uh-huh. Okay. I am not a weak boy. Uh, that is 22. Yeah, you kind of just like Charlie horse him down the hole. And boom, boom. Ha! Victory for Wake! <laughs> I'm going to roll something. Yep, Red Fang just like, gra he watches his giant claw just like grabs the edge and he peers his head up looking at you. I break the dirt where he's holding. <laughs> oh, whoops. <laughs> he goes down the ladder. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Grabs the ladder and he goes down. Scrung goes in next. You, you, did Chromagill you, take falling damage from that? No, he didn't. Okay. He just, he just like Family Guy fell to the floor. <laughs> I'm just going to go down with style then using slow fall, grabbing onto the mud wall on the side. Just <laughs> anime claw my way down. Morgan. Obviously follow suit. Okay. Chromagill, as you're getting up, you... Stuff falling on your back. Uh, oh. Are we? Oh, everybody made it down, I guess. <laughs> Almost. Jump, Linda! Just a pile of bones at the ah! bottom. Hold on. Rebuild. <laughs> yeah, not the most dexterous thing ever. Head first, a skeleton just hits the floor. Ooh. <laughs> mm. She's fine. She's fine. She lifts up. Part of her skull is missing. Mm. Don't people usually have, like, muscle and flesh to... Kind of protect those things a little she bit. She opens her mouth, and you watch the piece that caved in when she hit the floor falls out of her mouth. Hmm. Oh, speaking of, hey, Scrum, can uh, I have that uh, piece say. that you found? <laughs> Look at that, you match. I'm gonna, yeah. What? I'm, I'm going to wedge that piece of Chromagill's head off, like back in there. Medicine check. All right. And I was just going to kind of like bandage it up to hope that it would heal itself, I guess. 16. You put it in upside down, but it fits in perfectly. Uh, that works somehow. It doesn't look right, but yeah, I'm no doctor. <laughs> All future art of Crowbagill, he can have just kind of like <laughs> just a little one patch yeah, of just upside like, down. Yeah, just one little patch of yep. like kind of like uneven <laughs> cap. Scrung just looks at him. Yeah, he'll be fine. The adventuring gig's kind of like that. If you don't walk away looking like you're some kind of shambled, disconfigured mess of yourself, then you didn't do the job right. I'm an adventurer. <laughs> you are. All right. Uh, this tunnel so takes where you. Where are we? Yeah. So this tunnel takes you. Uh, it goes into just complete darkness going in forward, but you're in like more like the tunnel of the earth. So like this was like soil. And then as you go along, Renfang pulls off a torch off the side, and he lights it up. Uh, the entire side of the wall has been blown away or chipped away. You are now walking into the inner depths of the ziggurat. You are now entering what looks like a corridor that either leads to the north or leads to the right. So you're at a cross, you're at a, you're at a corner side of the entire ziggurat at this point. Hmm. Any idea which direction has what we're looking for? Yeah, Renfang, you were the, uh, mm. scouting party. Our kind say this way. There were traps. However, this leads towards the center chamber. I would There's assume a, that's where we're heading, right? There is a there is uh, a locked chamber going to the other side, though. So if you head north, you're going to head towards a staircase that leads up the chamber. If you head to the east, you're going to head to a locked chamber that, that they have not been able to open at this point. But it was little it is laden with traps. Well, do you do you know what kind of traps await us? Is it something that is avoidable, or is it just a... He points off to the side. You all look where he's pointing. There is a giant face in the wall that has a open hole where its mouth is, like it's blowing something out of it. 
and then he points over to the side where the other side of the wall is. There are pressure plates and there are spears on the floor on the other side. Oh, I have a feeling I know how this works. Yeah, hmm. Possibly. Could could be. Uh... Man, they, they build these things to last. I'll tell you that much. Mm -hmm. We have taken, we have disarmed all the walls heading towards the staircase. But not heading towards the locked door. No. That leads to a pitfall. Oh. Ooh. That doesn't sound like something we need. There must be something worth protecting <laughs> behind that locked door. You do raise a good point. <laughs> Although the fact that we're not seeing any Blargist activity down here tells me that they're probably not the, interested it in it. It might be something worth protecting, but maybe something worth coming back for. Maybe. We do have scary demon dog creatures roaming around up top, and that does seem a little bit more... We should certainly present. scout well, out what we're dealing with. Uh, Scrong does tell you their biggest concern right now would most likely is getting that portal up and running. So mm -hmm. they're, the portal is on the surface. It's in the center. It's the pretty much the centerpiece of the entire ziggurat. I wonder if this place has a, any connection to the collective one. Hmm. Uh, that would be reading the hieroglyphics again and doing a history check. Perhaps this here is a message. <laughs> Thirteen. Duh. Uh, with what light is being shown here, uh, you are seeing that there are collective mountains. Uh, it's almost like this weird scape. It kind of feels like you've seen this picture before, but it doesn't make any sense of where it was or how you would be able to see it. However... As you've been traveling along the southern end of the coast, uh, the picture starts to make a little bit of sense. If you look at it in a weird perspective, your mind kind of like puts together a small picture of all three mountains that make up the entire continent of La Serranis. Hmm. There are three mountains. The one on the left where Jahal Cove is, the one in the center, and the one where you are now. Yep, this place is definitely connected. Guys, I think that locked door might actually have something of use for us. Hmm. I'm gonna need a minute. I wanna use Mage Hand to get one of the loose spears uh, from the from the uh, used trap real quick. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, so I, I mean, need... they're on the floor. There's like yeah. four of them on the floor. You pick it up, no problem. Okay. Why well, did it is a little pressure plates? So yeah. well, the pr oh, they said they disarmed all of okay. that. So you could step on the pressure plate. It would do absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. So I'm in that case. I'm gonna grab two of them. Give one to Linda. A little bit of leverage, maybe try to pry that open. Maybe. Uh, Ren Fang takes you over towards where he, uh, claims that the closed door is. Uh, you head down the hallway until the darkness kind of, like, breaks open a little bit further into an open room. Uh, he holds the torch out in front of him. It's a dark drop all the way to the bottom. You don't know how far it goes. However, he holds it out. Anyone here have dark vision? I do. Uh, you look off into the distance. It's about a hundred foot fucking, like open hole that leads to a door that has another face on it. There's a door with a face on it way on the other side over there, but it is a big gap. That is not a that is not a jumping distance in my experience. Mm. We lost many down this way. Mm. Four brothers have fallen in this pit. There was a pressure plate in the center that activated the hole in the floor. Hmm. Uh, is there... there... Must be some way to deactivate it. It wasn't a sliding. How he pretty much tells it to you is that when they stepped on the plate, the entire floor sank. So the floor is so, still there. It's just... No, no, no. It broke apart and then fell. So it's like... Oh. The, he looked like it sank, but it's like piece by piece, it just fell a apart. They were running back, and then they fell with it. Hmm. Is there... Uh, I guess I'll just perception this real quick. Yeah, sure. Um... With a 16, do I see anything sort of like, is there like any sort of like remnant ground like on the rim of the room? Like, There are broken there, pieces there, of it, but not enough for someone to... Around. Okay. Yeah, there are broken pieces of the floor, but not enough for someone to keep footing on there without really, really good fucking checks. However, with that roll, you did notice that there are still hanging altars that swing from the ceiling. Uh, do we have anyone who, who really trusts their, their agility and acrobatics? I kind of like motion up. There's some, there's some dangling... Looks like just some some hanging things <coughs> that we could possibly maneuver across, but well, I don't think I could. Um, before I do that, I'm gonna embrace my uh, last crusade real quick. Is there any sand on the floor? Like, 
Uh, roll me a survival check. Uh, survival check is uh, uh, 16, sorry. There's no sand, but there is broken stone uh, showing that the uh, kobolds used to be here. All right, there actually work. is like a couple of like picks and whatnot off on the side. There is digging materials. All right. Rubble, rubble will be fine. Yeah. I'm just going to take like a handful of pebbles and rubble and just kind of throw it in kind of a shotgun spray cone pattern to see if any of them rest on any invisible platform that might be in front of us. Okay. Roll me a acrobatics check. Acrobatics, that is a modified 20. Okay, cool. Uh, the rubble falls through the floor. You watch as it disappears into the darkness, though... Rubble hits something way faster. So it's like you hear it hit something, and then a second later hit something, and then a second later hit something. So something in the center feels like there's a slope that goes up towards the ceiling. There's something there. I don't... Hold on. Everybody just watch real quick and tell me what your eyes see, because my eyes are stupid. Especially you. You have... You can see in the dark. Understood. I'm going to throw again. Just scatter like rubble and rocks in a, con a conical fashion in front of me. Okay. And I got a, uh, watching him do this, I got a 22 in perception. Uh, Ren Fang has dark vision. Let me check for him. Nah, he got nothing. Uh, so what was your roll again? 22. 22? Uh, there is a platform that makes a sort of triangle-like position that goes towards the center. And then as it goes along, there's spikes that dress across it. Okay, it looks like there's there's a bit of an angular platform in the middle, but it has spikes along it. So I don't know how how safe it is for traversal. But there is there is definitely some sort of structure there. It looks like uh, I'll go ahead and explain it to you for this way, so it's the sake of everyone here. Uh, there's 50 foot across. And then there's another 50 foot across. That's to get to this. Like at the middle point of the 50 is where the center of the room is. Mm -hmm. Uh, the triangle goes up. That's a 40-foot drop, and then it pivots down the more it gets towards you guys. So, like... So it's it kind of like a slope leading out that way, and then a yep. dead drop on the other side? Yes. <clears throat> Interesting. I wonder why they build it like that. Maybe the platform that was here before kind of rested on top of it, and once it was stepped on, things kind of fell around the sides of it? I'm not entirely sure. Um, that's probably how this room was held up. I wonder, hmm. either way, you're probably right. Those hanging orifices up there is probably the best way across. All right, which one of you feels they're more dexterous? Skrung is very dexterous. You know that since he's a rogue, but getting him to do it is another question. Wake is always dumb enough to do stuff like this. And I have a rope. <laughs> so, uh... First things first, how to get up to them. Uh, how high up are they? They are 20 feet above you, and it looks like if you were to swing from them, depending on if they actually still, like, give... Bear weight? Yeah. So long as they bear weight, if you were to swing across them, uh, you could probably give yourself another 10-foot jump of extra distance to reach them. They're 30 feet apart. Jesus. Uh, I mean, I have ways to mitigate that as a monk. Hmm. It's almost like this entire room was built for something to spec in that. Maybe. <laughs> uh, how far across? You said it's about 100 feet. It's The entire room is 100 feet. Okay, good. Uh, I have between 100... each other is 30. Okay, good. I have 150 feet of rope, so that'll at least be able to get us across if I get there. All right, fuck it. Chromagill, can you uh, give Toss. me a quick upsy daisy up that way? <laughs> Toss me. Toss, Toss me. me. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be in athletics, I'm yep. guessing. Uh, that's a 19 as I heave ho! Yeah, no, no, and no, I launch no problem. Off his hands. Okay, I'm gonna get it! Uh, you grab onto it. Uh, it look. Yep, so what you're holding onto right now looks like the head of a. like the hood of a cobra facing downward, and in its mouth is where, like, a small lantern would be held. Uh, the chain is being held by, uh. Th there's a chain holding up this thing, and. The chain looks sturdy enough to hold it since it's a giant fucking stone statue. Okay. As he's describing the uh, the cobra thing hanging from, just just imagine designing something so ornate that hardly anyone would ever see. 
And now I'm hanging from it. I'm sure the people who built this would be spinning in their graves if they aren't already. You hear rattling off in the far <laughs> down, down below this. <laughs> Linda, was that you? All right. Oh. So I'm just going to uh, basically Beverly Hill ninja my way through this. Just rock back, forth, back. Fourth, until I get enough momentum that I feel confident enough launching myself. I'm Acrobatics. also going to burn a key point to use uh, Step of the Wind, where anything, like, all of my jump DCs are going to be cut in half. So Okay. I can launch myself twice as far as I normally would be able to. So you make it across the first one with absolutely no problem whatsoever. <laughs> You guys okay. watch as his frame starts to disappear into the darkness, but you hear him, like, just hanging and swinging off these chains. All right, I got two more! Skrung, do you want to go with him? Ha! <laughs> what? You seem really good at this whole jumping and grabbing thing. Nah, it looks like he's got it. Okay. <laughs> All right, you're on the second swing. And uh, where I go! All right, you make the cross that one with no incident whatsoever. Oh. Your hand gets snagged on something as you get to the third one. Ah! My only good hand! <laughs> Ah! Uh, it feels the same as the webbing from the cliffside. Oh, that doesn't bode well. What? What is it? I feel web. Uh-oh. Hmm. Yeah. It's only one strand, though. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Just try to gnaw it off. Okay. Uh... The only thing that this was going to do for you is you can still make the jump across to the other side. It's just going to be with disadvantage. Not if I nod off. <laughs> uh, roll me a medicine check, then. Uh, uh, 15. That one. Bit off one of your fingers. 15? <laughs> nah, you can't beat me to it. You feel like it's going to get stuck in your teeth until you stop and you give it a good yank and it's off your hand. <laughs> All right. One more. You make it across with no problem. Huh. Uh, there is... So I get for burning key. Huh? Yep. Yeah, pretty much that key saved you from doing any checks on that one. Uh, you look across. Uh, you now see that there's a silhouette of a platform all the way off in the distance right in front of the face. Okay. You can jump down there with no problem. Awesome. I'm going to give the rope two tugs to let them know that I made it across. I'm safe! You hear him off in the distance. Well, it sounds like he's made it to the other side, but... Yep. I have no idea where to secure this thing, but we'll figure that out later. So you step on the platform? I do. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> uh, you are now standing before what looks like... It's weird, because you know the Yanti, uh, they're, some of them are part man, some of them are more snake than man. Uh, this one looks like it's part of a man's face that's starting to gain the features of a cobra. Uh, you can stick your arm well within the mouth of this thing. Oh, that sounds like a wonderful idea. Mm -hmm. Nothing dangerous. Like that, like you could just, like, just by gauging it, you can stick your arm into this thing. I'll go ahead and do the one that's already gone. I reach my ghost arm into the, uh, mouth. Uh, you feel there is three sockets big enough to fit fingers in, though, like... When you put your fingers in there, they sort of make a shape. And you're not certain what this means, but when you put your fingers through the slot, you feel pressure plates. Holding a big snake bowling ball. Okay. So there are three pressure plates. Yep. Okay, so this uh, door mouth over here, it's, it's got pressure plates inside of it. Is there any indication of how many I'm supposed to press and which ones, or should I just do all three at the same time? All right, boys, you need to start looking around and investigating. Yeah, I was going to say, mm -hmm. uh, is this investigation specifically? Yes. Okay, uh, then I've got an 11. 11? Just looking for any sort of clues or hints. I got a 12. A 12? Scrong didn't get anything. What about Renfang? Renfang got worse. All right, so... <laughs> Nope! <laughs> <laughs> Just press them, I guess. <laughs> uh, so he says that there are pressure plates, and Renfang has dismantled these things before, though he did say that uh, the pressure plates inside here 
have a mechanism that runs along the wall. So maybe it's not looking at the wall that you should be. Maybe looking behind the walls that might give you a clue. Hmm. Hello? Red Fang's talking in riddles. Hold on. No, Skrong's pretty much just like, <laughs> af after hearing that, Skrong just likes, oh, okay, I get the idea. All right. Tons of fun. He pats you on the side, Chromagill. Break the wall. Oh, okay, sure. Uh, I get advantage breaking walls. I'm yep. Not use that. Come on, man. Really? <laughs> uh, 14. Oh. Both times, single digits. Uh, we were working so well earlier. You kind of just like hold your hand up and make a bald fist and then just punch the wall. <laughs> there are designs behind the wall. Oh, they, there's, there's stuff back here. Oh. Uh, you may roll investigation with advantage at this point. 17. 17? Seven, yeah, 17. <laughs> there's a repeating pattern along the wall and it also looks like there's like a little bit of a line mechanism that goes with it. Uh, it almost looks like the line starts with, uh, so I want Morgan, put your hand to, uh, against the wall with all those checks you guys made. It runs along the thumb up to the middle point to your pinky and then makes the same line over and over again. I don't have the same finger structure. You might be able to explain it better than I would. The, the one stubby and the other stubby, probably not super clear. Okay, and this is just a, a line. Yeah. Okay, so. But like, it indicates like a small dot, like three dots into thumb, middle, pinky. I think this is, let's see. It's made to fight things, not decipher pictographs. <laughs> It's got a th it's got a thumb, a middle finger, and a pinky. I, I, it might be the order you press them in, or use those fingers. I'm not entirely sure. Might have a lot to do with the three mountains. So, yeah, try that. Uh, that you say that out loud. Roll me an insight check. Uh, insight, as the wise boy that I am, that's a f sixteen. The middle mountain of La Saranis is the tallest. The one on the western side of La Saranis is the smallest, and the one on the on where you guys are, Hollum, is the largest. All right. Middle first. Nothing happens. Thumb. Nothing happens. Pinky. You hear sliding rocks underneath you. Oh, God, I'm gonna die. This is how it happens. Uh... You, the entire wall is rumbling at this point. Uh, you guys watch as small Did you spikes, press something? small spikes begin to rise from the floor. The entire floor is lifting up. Uh, no. Yep, I, I pressed it. The floor is going up. I don't. Uh. The floor is going up, and it creates an entire path for you guys. Oh, hey, look at that. We can walk. You That's can, convenient. You can now walk across, and you notice that there are kobold dead bodies on the floor. Oh, hmm. What? One, one <laughs> being, one being spiked on one, one being like on impaled. the, yeah, impaled on one of the spikes. Oh. Ren Fang, were these the, uh, the people you lost? You were talking about? He nods his head. Oh. Well, there's now a pathway. You can walk across without incident. The, uh, when you lift your fingers <laughs> away, the mouth of the, the, the door's mouth begins to close and it rises up. Well, that's our way in, I guess. Oh. Shall we proceed? I believe we shall. Uh, this is a rather small room in here. However, uh, this looks like a treasure chamber. There is piles of gold that arch the entire side of the wall. It's almost like a broom closet filled with jewels and gold. There are three chests sitting in the front and hanging above them. Now that you're looking at a larger version of the things you were hanging from, it's the collective one. It's the face of the collective one overlooking the archway of the treasure. There he is. I'd say this seems pretty connected to the collective one. All right. Yep. Well, this is going to be pretty necessary. I mean, if we're going to be fighting a war against demons, they're going to need funds. And I believe 
This is what you would call a jackpot. Hmm. Uh, given the time that this would allow, I'm gonna go ahead and say, like, being scrung who he is, he just starts eyeing everything together. He's got a nose for treasure. Everything in this room, including all the gemstones that you have, you're looking at a bounty of at least 1,500 gold. Hmm. Not bad. Just gonna start scraping shit into my portable hole. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, the chests, though, that's a different story. There are three chests, uh, in this room, overlooked by the collective one. Collective one, I hope you don't mind, but we're, uh, you know, as, as somebody that you've helped out in the past, I, I would greatly appreciate whatever bounty you would, uh, You feel something in your pack begin to stir. Stow upon us, I reach back and... It's the compass that was supposed to get you towards your destination. It's actually, act it's actually stirring in your hand. This is different. Is this you? I mean, I know that... You don't feel a, you don't hear a voice, but you feel confirmation when you actually ask that. The Almost like something in your to soul yes. told you it's it, this is has something to do with the collective one. All right. You Sorry. hear then you start hear you hear a stir in your head. Almost like a small hiss is being uh, echoed into your mind. Ooh. The mountains call. The mountains call. I form the mountains. The mountains call, choose one, its bounty will be given to you. All right. I know that face, he's hearing voices. I am. So the middle one, but I wasn't so saying. there are three chests. There are three chests. Remember, the tallest mountain is the yeah, one you guys Silas. are on. That's all, yep, that's all the way on the side, so that's Hollem. And then I point towards Jahal. That's where Silver Gleam, the mountain of Silver Gleam is. And then I point towards where we are now. Yep. And just indicating which, uh... Yep. So there's Hollem, Silver Gleam, and then the Emerald Coast. Emerald Coast, Hollem, Silver Gleam. It's hard to decipher which one would be the most poignant. I mean, as fate would have it, our adventure began at this one and ended at that one. Hmm. Hmm. This one is the tallest mountain. I point towards the one that represents Hollem. So that might give it the most... Might have the most value. Might have the most significance inside of it. Hmm. The one in Jahal, though, Hollem, is where the heart of the Collective One was stored. So it might be important to the Collective One specifically. Very much so. I'm getting a good feeling about that one. Okay. And I'm not sure, but I mean, obviously, the one that represents the, 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 you know, the coast that we're at very well might have something to do with what is actually here. Well, no, the Emerald Coast is the middle one. That's I, I guess I should reiterate oh, right, this right. one. Emerald Coast is the middle one. That's the uh, that's the smallest mountain. Gotcha. Okay, that's where we're at now. Oh, uh, no, you're at Hollem, so that's the largest mountain. That's where you guys are. Oh, so, we're at the center. Gotcha. No, you're at the you're at the far east. We're on the east? Which you're, on, the... you're on the eastern side. That's the largest mountain. That's Hollem. You guys were just in there. But the tallest... But the tallest, that, okay. that's right. the tallest one. Yeah, I think one. that's where I was getting tripped up. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. the middle finger was the tallest one. That was the order that we did that in, if I recall correctly. I think it's just an order of scale, not position geographically. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so. So the scale of the mountains is being foretold here. All right. I Either do way. think the, the heart of the collective one does make some sense to me, though I will, I will leave the. the and the heart of the collective you. one, that's Silver Gleam. That's yeah. the one on the far yeah, east. That was the one that represented Jahal. Yes. Which would be the west, I think. Right? Yes, west. I apologize. It's all good. All Sorry right. I made this. I, I figured I would fuck this one up. I it's apologize. All good. <laughs> Direc directions are rough. Especially when you're trying to keep all of your cannon in the in your head. Yep. Uh, so yeah, Wake basically makes those arguments. There's the one that represents where they are, where we are now. The one that represents the capital of the world. And then the one that represents... Where the heart of the collective where one is. Where the heart of the collective one is. Hmm. Does your compass respond any more strongly to any specific chest? No, it's more of a choice it's giving you. It you was just letting me know that this is what it represented. Hmm. What it, whichever chest you draw from is going to be a piece of the earth itself. Whether or not you decide to take it from the rock. smallest piece, the middle, the middle piece, or the biggest piece, that's up to you. My gut is telling me to go the one that represents Jahal. It's where this all began. It feels like... That would be the middle treasure chest. 
I walk towards it unless there's any objective or objections. Nope, none from me. All right. We've made our decision, collective one. All right. Uh, the snake head opens its mouth, and it looks like it was about to eject something out of it. There was a blade that kind of shoots out, but it stops midway as you're holding the piece that was stirring within you. You hold the compass. The blade halts. Please don't kill me. Separates into two. It's a forked tongue. Ship. It creates a forked tongue. It shoots itself against the other two chests you didn't pick, and it draws it into its mouth, and the mouth forms away into the wall. All right, bye then. <laughs> uh, you pick up what looks like a small effigy of the collective one itself. You are now holding what looks like a stone figurine of the collective one itself in your hand. Oh, look, there he is. I remember when he was all big and giant, punching a little jelly-faced man and down to a hellhole. It you were there. Strange for it. things. <laughs> uh, yeah. You hear you hear the hissing voice in your head once more. You hold the power to mend Earth itself. My heat burns brightly. You've seen it once before. I have. It can be made once again. Oh, boy. He basically tells you that you have an item that can basically create a small volcano. It's a grenade that can create a small <laughs> volcano. I'm just so <laughs> going to put just, that uh, yeah. gingerly in a satchel. Be careful where you put that wake. It sounds pretty dangerous. Keep it away from my crotch. <laughs> that does not sound like a fun day. So Skrung is off collecting the treasure. Ren Fang's just like being like, okay, well, this is not why we're here, but this is a nice bounty, I assume. I'm just going to assume that having something that can create a massive fiery eruption is pretty good against things that get banished by fire. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. A volcano might make a flame taller than a Blargus. All right, so with that, uh, the room is now barren. You got yourself a little bit of treasure. Oh. Uh, you got yourself some precious gemstones, and you got yourself a really nice holy hand grenade, thanks to the collective one. Collective volcanic grenade. So you only heard that in your head. No one else heard that. So what do you tell your comrades as you put the effigy away? I can make a volcano now. Uh huh. Like just roll a nature check with that. Uh, actually, a religion check. I'm sorry, for everyone here. A religion check. Yep. You don't have to. You know all this shit. That's a ten. I got a six. Ten and a six. You guys know jack shit about anything about the Earth God. So Udoth is well beyond your grasp, which is weird for you. But then again, religion doesn't really seem to stem into your forest because that's more about nature itself than yeah. you are about religion. So the whims and the fancies and the tales of gods from the from everyone else outside of your realm doesn't really reach your head. And you, you're a Kelpie man, so that doesn't make any sense to you about the earth. Mm -hmm. Look, I get it. It's it's weird. Trust me, I'm pretty much Kelpie as they go. But <laughs> Kelpie all the way. Yeah, which is weird because that means that you're holding a sacrilegious artifact in your hand. You know what? I'm you're not you're basically speaking to the exact opposite of your god. Yeah, what has Kelpie done for me exactly? <laughs> I'm just going to be honest on that one. That's fair. <laughs> yeah, so far, Udoth has been asking you to help him out this whole time. And you've been helping out Udoth a lot. So, funny that. A man from the sea getting, uh, getting assistance from a creature that creates the exact opposite of it. Truly, it was a creature with feet in both worlds that would save it. To be fair... I have faith, yeah. Also, <laughs> also, I've made more uh, connections firmly on the land. All right. So with that, the only other path you have going around is heading over towards the staircase, and that's where we'll take a break. <gasps> we'll be right back after this. Welcome back to the table, wonders. <gasps> All right. So, finding a neat little parting gift from the Collective One, you are somehow still attached, and you found out, hey, this temple is uh, in tribu attribution to Udoth. So, going into that locked door may have netted you a nice way to clear out this temple for your good pal, uh, the Collective One. Yeah. 
Nice handy. We, we got a nice little grenade, a nice little volcano grenade. Yep. Hey, you know where a volcano would probably do some some serious damage to uh, to some dangerous folks? I'm guessing most anywhere. Volcanoes are scary. Very, very true. But those trap door spiders probably wouldn't like a volcano waking up in the middle of their hunting spot. Mm. Of course. Are you, all, are you all talking about this out in character, by the way? Yes. Okay, I cool. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm also going to say... He said it's a little volcano, but what is a little volcano? Yeah, uh, my knowledge of volcanoes is they're pretty big, so even a little one would do a lot of damage. He made mention that it can mend the earth, so it's very possible that this thing could possibly be of catastrophic scale. Well, here's the thing about that wake. I remember the collective one. I was there with that whole nonsense. I remember. Uh, the Skrung is talking to you as you're saying this. I don't want that portal destroyed. It's my only way back home. I agree. I so are you're, you're thinking either. of summoning a giant volcano in the middle of this temple. I am not thinking about doing that. I am not doing it. I am simply saying that I have the option to create a volcano where I want now. A small one, not a giant one. We don't know how small, small it, you've, oh, these kids, the, these these cute uh, little kids over here haven't actually seen what the collective one looks like, do they? No, it's, a it's basically a giant, fi it's, it's basically a giant fire snake made out of magma. Oh, okay, it's, that sounds uh -huh. And I'm pretty scary. sure that was just a fragment of it. Yeah, uh, it slam dunked an illithid elder brain back into its realm. Jelly boy, his name was Victor, he was an asshole. Hmm. He truly wasn't the victor that day, was he? No. <laughs> I'm picking it up. I'm learning humor. It's a, I'm, I'm it's a, it's an interesting concept. I'm proud of you. Uh, as you guys go along, uh, Skrung's pretty much just telling you, yeah, uh, let's make that a last case scenario, please. I, and I think you only get one shot with that. Probably. I mean, I don't know the rules of God items, so. Yeah, you like the collective one didn't really like leave you anything. The only thing you could glean from that is that this thing creates a volcano. Yeah. I mean, I don't even technically know how to use it. I don't know if I'm supposed to throw it, crack it open, what. It's, I'll figure it out. Yep, because that the only thing you could gleam out of that was like, it holds a fraction of my power and you've seen it before. So obviously that means something volcanic. Yeah, and the only thing I think that I've come close to something like this, I mean, granted, it was a lot more powerful, was the collective one's heart. I'm pretty sure it was just a title and not literal, but if it was literal, it's pretty powerful. Uh, acolytes have been known to carrying pieces of the gods themselves, but from what uh, from what you've been known from Rist and he's been telling you is that he thinks that the gods are a celestial form of the entire like realm itself. So, so technically there's a piece of every god somewhere because the gods have been seen as concepts more than they have been physical manifestations. So a piece of the planet that holds the concept is in every realm in some way, shape, or form. So basically the collective one was basically, you held the concept of Earth itself in your hand at that one point. I have the whole world in my hand. Well, this is the second your, time I've made this joke. In your pack, actually. Yes. And, and now it it's back in the hands of technically the son of uh, the son of Udoth in some shape or form on Kelpie. That that video went direct to DVD. It, mm. Son of Udoth. <laughs> the buddy cop with Vecker. <laughs> so there's the collective one buddy cop style with Joe Massacre in a fucking Corvette. Now that is a team up I've been waiting to see. <laughs> All right, so you go keep going down the hallway. Uh, Ren Fang pretty much like tells you each time when you pass by a pressure plate. Like obviously, <laughs> there's been work here. The cobalt. We did that. We did that. Yeah, we did that we one. Did we did that one. We Don't worry about do this that one. We didn't do that one. Don't touch it. <laughs> I was about to say you get up to one point where after like four or five times, Ren Fang has warned you. Oh, by the way, we've done that one. Don't worry about it. You finally get up to. Uh, you get up to a part where Ren Fang has been kind of keeping himself quiet. You are now in a large square, almost auditorium-like thing, where there are two sets of stairs that kind of spiral up, going up to the ceiling. You can see daylight coming from the top here. But it's going to be a long walk, and every time you go up at least 20 feet, there's a floor, so there's two other pathways that it could lead towards. Mm -hmm. But you know that your destination is all the way up. Mm -hmm. So we just have to keep following this path and... Hopefully picking the one that just gets us higher, correct? Uh, there are two staircases. Uh, 
one, like, so the left staircase will, when you get up to the next floor, there will be a room on the right and then a staircase that keeps going. And if you take the left, it'll be a room on the left and it keeps going up. So if you take one staircase, you're beholden to that side of the room if you ever want to go into these uh, rooms themselves. Okay. Um, I'm just going to do a quick perception, kind of looking up both sides and seeing if anything, okay. if anything about them sticks out as more attractive or a reason we should go that direction. Instead. Cool. Not great. That is 12. A 12. Okay. Uh, what languages do you speak? That I speak? All of them. <laughs> I can, yeah, if, if we're talking, I can understand all of them. But as far as like uh, common, uh, under common, sylvan, and druidic are what I have here. Yes, because unfortunately walls don't speak because you have druidic. Mm hmm. That actually does work in some way. You see on the walls, there are plaques that kind of, like, dictate the staircases. So, like, if you go on the left side uh, in, Dru in Druidic, there's bits and pieces of Druidic that state uh, to, for the land of silver, and on the other staircase, for the land of gold. All right, we have this direction says the land of silver, this direction says the land of gold. Now, I don't know a lot about societies, but I do believe... Gold is typically more valuable than silver. That's Any, true. Any thoughts? Uh, <laughs> wouldn't it, uh, is there anything in the center? Says Skrung as he opens up. He asks you to take a look and see if there's anything in the uh, center. I take a closer look. Ooh, with a nat 20 in perception. Nice. Nat 20? Uh, there are plaques that are patterned around the entire center of where the stair there is no staircases, and it's like a dead drop. Uh, and in this one, it says... Uh, a land that connects both of them. Uh, we've got some messages saying a land that connects both of them there in the middle. I mean, that sounds like the best of both worlds. It, is this just like kind of a shoot, like a shaft? No, it, it literally looks like uh, there's a giant platform in the center that kind of like arches up and then it creates another triangle and it literally doesn't go anywhere. It's like a 10 foot elevation. It almost looks like it's some kind of art installation. But it has those plaques centered all around it. It might be some sort of like I, I start like kind of like touching around it to It's just sandstone. I mean this is just sandstone. I don't understand. This might Is it talking about like above us? Like are we going to go up and meet back in the middle and that's the land where the two combine you know, for both? Uh, Ren Fang will speak up about that one. No, this staircase is supposedly supposed to leading up to the center courtyard. This will lead to the very top of the ziggurat. Hmm. Uh, from what you saw outside on the ziggurat, the staircase led up to a rather large housing area. So it's like there's a structure that houses over the top of it, but you didn't see what was inside the top of it. Makes sense. Um. I'm going to roll an investigation check around this little central thing because wh whether it is just art or not, maybe there's some sort of mechanism or some sort of rune or something that we're just not... <laughs> not catching. Yeah. Okay. 14. 14? Okay, cool. Uh, the platform looks... Uh, the platform in the center, it does look like there's a seam on each corner, so it looks like there's a flap that's covering over something that's making this triangle. Hey, uh, someone want to help me out here? It looks like this is actually being covered by something. I just, I try wedging like a dagger in, try to pry a little bit out. Uh, roll me a, <laughs> what would be a good roll for this one? Roll me a sleight of hand. Light of hand is a 23. You are unable to wedge the dagger into the slit. Whatever, you're, when you put your knife into the slit, it hits something flat on the other end, almost like it's covering the slit. Ting. Ting, ting. Huh. So there's something on the other side, but it's flat, and it's not, It there's gonna be another way to open this mechanism. Well, there's got to be something else around here that would open this thing, because it's not pryable. Hmm. I'm going to roll intelligence for Ren Fang real quick. Nope. What about Skrung? Ah, Skrung's a little bit better. Would it have something to do with that, uh, 
That mountain puzzle you were talking about before? These people seem to really like these mountain things. I mean, maybe. Land of silver? Then that's closer to silver, silver gleam. gleam? Land of gold is... And we obviously just hit the jackpot down below, so we're in the land of gold. So that must mean that this middle one here... Is the, is the uh, Emerald? Emerald Coast. Hmm. All right, where does that leave us? Well, we're in the one of gold. That is where we are. Would it make more sense to travel that way? But these pathways talk about every single mountain. What about the land of silver? Where the heart that's, was? That's, that's Jahal Cove. Yeah, that's back where uh, Jahal Cove is. And there's clearly some sort of mechanism that's blocking this off. Mm -hmm. If that has something to do with the Emerald Coast. You can still just completely go upstairs. It's just that if you choose one staircase, you're beholden to that pathway. Yes. yes. Therefore, if we can find a way to open this one, that might be beneficial. And it's clearly something that can be. There's some sort of mechanism here. I'm going to do an investigation and just see if I see anything connected to the centerpiece that might give any indication on okay. mechanisms that work it. Uh, buh, 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 that's a 17. A 17. A land that connects them. Uh, that starts ringing in your mind. You're trying to see if there's any way that somehow puts these two staircases together. Uh, you look on the floor. The sandstone creates a pattern almost like in an X-like motion. Uh, it reaches towards the center, outstretches to both the staircases, but two of these lines don't add up. They don't touch a staircase, they touch a side of a wall. So, think of it this way. There's the path you just walked into, the staircase, and then on another angle is where the line where the other staircase meets. Mm -hmm. And then the exact opposite for the other side of the wall. All right, if, you, if you look at this pattern on the floor, it's kind of like... We have these paths for the different mountains, but then there's these paths here that just, that kind of just lead into nothing. Maybe there's a mechanism or like a brick or a pressure plate on one of these walls that if you press them at the same time, it'll open. Starts Wake starts fiddling around on one side of the uh, wall. Which, which uh, do you take the land of silver or the land of gold's wall? I'll go with the land of silver. I start heading over to the land of gold, doing the same, just kind of feeling around. All right, both of you roll investigation check. Slappity, 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 slappity. 13. Slappity. Investigation's easy for me. A big old plus nothing on that one. 17 <laughs> with a minus one. All right. Slappity, slappity, slappity. Uh, 17. What was yours again? I'm sorry. 13. 13? Uh, unfortunately for you, there's not really much you can gather from this. It just looks like a straight up wall. I don't think I've got anything on my end. Uh, for your end, you start like papping around on the wall trying to see if there's anything that makes any difference. Uh, there are jars that are all strung across the wall. Oh, that's different. Uh, you take a you take a look at these jars, and on the inside of them, there actually looks like there's this weird, almost like sulfuric smelling ash inside the bottles. Oh, that's volcanic. Uh, though there is a brim of wax coming out of one of them that almost looks like something kind of erupted out towards the middle and overflowed out of it, but it still smells like sulfur. That's mm. the only difference you see so far. I found these jars over here. Ooh, more interesting than what I found. You also have, uh, after he mentions the jars, there are jars as well, but none of them stand out to you. They all look exactly the same. However, you notice that one of them has that wax that kind of like stems up making a candle in the middle of the, sulf uh, the sulfur. I'm going to ignite that candle. Okay. It doesn't create a normal flame. It creates a green flame. Ooh. I'm gonna lift it out and see if there's like any hidden messages written. You cannot on the wall. lift. You cannot lift up the uh, the wax because the oh. candle is like in the inside of the oh, of the jug. Gotcha. Yeah, it's in the neck of the jug. All right. You can lift up the jug itself. Yeah, that's that's what I meant. Just... Okay. This jug is heavy. It's full of like something inside of it. This jug is heavy. It's got something in it. Probably more candle. I don't. Uh, it creates the green flame. You hold purchase to it. You lift it up towards the wall. Nothing's happening, though, when you lift up the jug, that's where the line actually meets the wall. Hey, Chromagill, where the line meets the wall, does that, uh... I set it back down and just kind of wander over to Chromagill's side. Uh, 
I guess, giving you advantage on your to check. Figure out what Yeah, you, you can grant him advantage on that with that knowledge. Not with that one. Uh, does a 15 get us anything? 15. You also find another jug that has wax in the middle of it. There we oh, go. wait, here. This yeah. one. Here How did I miss that earlier? Uh, anybody got a light? Yes. Boop. <laughs> Red. Oh, no. Ooh. Time. Oh dear. And from unknown of wow. all things. <gasps> oh. Never call Goku at 3 a.m. Wow. Never. Linda. <laughs> Linda's now speaking to you. Oh, you can all hear me now, thank God! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, so I ignite that one as well. Uh, it creates a red flame. <sighs> and so the other one made a green flame. This one makes a red flame. Christmas. <laughs> when they come together, it's not a very pretty color. Yeah. You, pl you place the jug down? Yes. Uh, you place the jug down on the line. Your line begins to ignite a small trail of fire that leads back towards the center. Oh, careful. Ooh. Watch your feet. Okay. I'll it's not It's not red, though. Your side is green. Your side makes a red trail. All right. Okay. Wake, so I have an idea. These are different. These are different colored. Uh, the, the, the jugs produce a different color flame and they have a different color trail that leads to the center, but mm. nothing's happening so far. Mm. Okay, so Wait. what if we swap Yeah, them? let's let's switch them. Let's see how that works. All right. Uh, both of you roll athletics one, check. Two, one, two, one, two. Don't break this and shatter our one chance. Uh, I have da, 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 a 16. Uh, 15. A 15? Uh, you guys lift it up with no incident whatsoever, but the reason why I asked you to make that is because because of the heft of these bottles, uh, the heft of the jars, you notice on the floor, the moment you start walking away and you pass each other, the flames are dying on the trail. Oh, oh, hold on. Right. Quick, quick. No, no, like, like the more time you spend walking, the more they're dying. Okay. Up, 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 up. So with those checks, you are able to put the flames back down. Up, 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 up. And now the flames match. Uh, the flame trail now leads up the middle part of the section. The doors open. And you now see an arcane sigil in the center that almost looks like a map of the entire continent. <gasps> that is a very intricate sigil. Turns out we were the land that connected both of them. The fire, the, map was the, the green fire now hangs over Silver Gleam, and you actually watch as the entire silver, uh, silver Staircase now lights up with this fire. Like, it's like, it's a lighting system. It's not like all the torches are now lit up. Oh. And now all the torches on the right side get the other color. However, the center, the center mountain holds no color. Well, that's interesting. You put your hand towards the uh, sigil? I do. My ghost hand, in fact. Uh, when you put your hand near the sigil, you feel like your hand can actually push the flame. You're moving the flame that's sitting up top the mountain sides. Interesting. I'm going to try to, I guess, push some of the light towards the center one. Okay. Or, like, try to bridge them with my pinky, my thumb... And then my middle finger so you move the, the center you, one. Uh, you're moving which one? Hollem or Silver Gleam's flame to the center? I'm honestly going to try to, like, if my hand is wide enough. No, it's, okay. they, they, like, there's, like, a good arm's length in oh, between okay, the mountains. So it's like a fathom. Yeah. I'm going to try to move uh, Silver Gleam's light towards the center. Okay. All the flames now turn green. Every flame is ignited in this entire staircase that leads up. All the flames on the right are gone, and the doors close. Hmm. And if I move it back? All the lights return, and all the doors open. Interesting. I'm going to try it with the other hand. Try to push the... Uh... The red flame. Yeah, the red flame towards the center. Red flame, all the doors on the silver path close, and all the lights are now pushed towards the other side. Now I'm going to try to move Silver Gleam into the center with it. So both flames in the center at the same time. Oh. The lights begin to twist around each other. <laughs> oh, I'm playing the with shit I shouldn't be. The mountains on the sigil disappear, and all that is left is the coast. 
It's like the doors boom. don't open, but every flame on the staircases are now draped in a gold almost color. Ooh. So now I have a one singular color. Yep. Fireball. Yep. The uh, the lights are dancing around each other. All the doors are closed, but all the staircases are now lit up with the color gold. Okay. If I try to split them again, do they go back to their original colors? Or yes. Or do I now have two yellow balls? Okay. Nope, they return to their original state. <sighs> We're putting on an exciting light show. Very much least. so. I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. To the point where I'm, like, like Scrung is now just like, yeah, to the point where I'm afraid that we might be gaining attention upstairs. Good point. Hmm. Anybody have any, uh, you know, before I just go back and put these things where they were, anybody have any idea what's happening? Uh, that would be an arcana check for everyone. All right. Wait, strong suit. Eight. Scrung got a nat one, so fuck that. <laughs> Scrung has no time for this shit. Uh, that is a 19. 19? Oh, thank God. I was, someone got a good roll of nine for me. <laughs> yep. You're switching doors something something about this feels like you're actually opening up doors that correlate with each side so the fact that you came out of a treasure chamber means that this is a conversion of mountains so something about this means you're trying to open up doorways that are almost like this this almost feels like a sort of conference room where like a merging of both mountains are put together mm -hmm. so all this arcane stuff feels like it's like a weird, almost sort of ritual for diplomatics, uh, diplomatic uh, rituals. Hmm. This seems to be some kind of convergence for the three mountains. Yeah, but like in what way? I mean, these well, you closed off all the doors. <laughs> you closed off all the doors when you put them into the middle of the mountainside, but all the pathways now light up gold. Hmm. However. Were these side doors just distractions, and this will open up a, some sort of main path? I mean, I didn't see any other doors open when I closed those two. Uh, but the fires did spin around each other in a vortex sort of way, and they get faster the more they stay together. Yeah, at the moment, they've just been staying together for about a minute while we've been figuring this out. So you left them there in the middle, then? Yeah, yes. I'm just kind of holding them in my hands, just like, what are we doing? <laughs> you hear something churn, almost like... The entire bottom of you, the bottom of the floor that you're standing on is moving. Oh, I think I think we're getting I, something. I we're, think we're getting we're, somewhere here. I think we're ascending. Roll an investigation check. I was gonna I was gonna try perception to see if I can perceive if we oh sure sure move, uh, if we in the room were moving. Uh, perception for me is a fifteen. All right. Uh, eighteen for me for perception. Fourteen. Yeah. You're rising up the staircase slowly but surely. The entire I, center part that you're standing on is lifting up. Well, then, if anything, I think we're doing a good thing here, No, right? I, I think this is the correct path, in my opinion. As we you keep going, the there. sigil starts to fade away, and the fire still remains dancing in the middle. Okay. Let's just ride this. I'm going to keep going until I don't feel movement. I mean, this room's closed off, so nothing's getting in. <laughs> this strange elevating platform. Uh, as you guys keep going up, roll another perception check as you gaze upward. Uh, that's a 13 for that me. That one, I don't see it. Uh, that one is a 19 for me. Okay. Uh, Wake, you hear movement all the way up. Like, things notice that something's going on with the center platform. This elevated platform is gaining the attention of the Blargast. But however, when you look up, it almost looks like the ceiling that this thing is leaning up towards fits the exact same slot as the center of the platform you're rising on. I think we're going to get to the place that they want to get to before they do. Maybe. Hopefully. So I have no idea what's happening. I think we're about to have a welcoming committee when we get to the top. Yep. At this point, Skrung is now <laughs> just getting his gun ready. <laughs> Ren Fang's getting his sword at the ready. Uh, you pretty much are elevating the entire platform, and you're going to reach the surface in a bit. Well, no stealthing our way around this one, I'm guessing, because I can't exactly let go of this. 
Fair point. Strong's a little too preoccupied with the fact you're going to get into a fight to piece together what this all means, considering that he's seen the portal before. Mm -hmm. But the fact that he got the fuck out of there because of the Blar guest means that his memory's a little foggy on what happened. Are you guys ready? I don't think we have much of a choice, I was, frankly. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if I, I move my hands, these doors are opening. Yeah, I think we're just head, yeah. heading up and... Uh, well, you took your hand off the flame but this entire time. It's just been dancing oh, okay. around. So you've just been letting this thing rise up. All right. So Those gamers have been rising up and we're ready to fight the <laughs> Blargast. As the sunlight peers in even further, you are now at the very top of the uh you are now at the very top of this elevated platform. Uh you have reached where the staircases finally reach their destination. Uh around you is a large open uh open door temple on both sides. So there's like one to the east and one to the west. Giant open doors that lead to the staircases as you watch as wolves start to reconvene towards the center. Hmm. Uh, you are standing, like, when you stop, you continue to elevate, like, another couple of feet. So you're now 20 feet up in the air. As you look down, underneath you is another small little open, like, uh, sh uh, shaded area. Like, there's another pathway that leads into the center. All right. So you created almost, like... So, pretty much, it was like, you're inside the giant altar right now, and then the platform you're standing on is another shaded altar. So, something's underneath you, and you just don't see it yet. Oh. So, there's something below us. But. But you got a whole crew of Blargas to worry about at this point. Wake's kind of stealth to try to hide in this room that just moved. <laughs> got the light on this thing. Okay, that is a 22. 22. Uh, you can roll a stealth to kind of like just shimmy your body onto the floor so as things come in, they don't see the perspective of the top of the building. All right, just gonna right, scoop around this way. So you like, you get on all four solid snake style and just hit the floor. Uh, solid awake. Uh. What about you guys? What are you gonna do? Uh, I'm gonna cast invisibility on myself. Okay. Uh, Morgan is now gone, except now there's just Linda standing there. Oh no, I got Morgan again. She's well-armed. She's got a club and a spear. Uh, Skrung, with a stealth check, decides to follow suit with you, and because he's small, and so is uh, Renfang, they both hit the floor. I don my shroom cloak that adds to my stealth. Usually not very good at it, but with the plus five it gives me, I get a 15. Magically... As you pull the cloak over you, everyone else watches as it looks like it's just vegetation that's always been there growing from the, from the, uh, from the ceiling. Huh. Don't worry, I'm still here! That's nice. And that broke the illusion. You can now all see him. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Well, no, the enemies can't, though, <laughs> but right. you can now see him. You know where I am, but I don't think they do. Wake's preoccupied with the enemies that are currently encircling the room. <laughs> yep, as they come in, I'm going to start rolling for all the Blar guests. Uh... You guys watch as wolves start walking in, and then there's two other ones that look like they're more humanoid at this point. However, they're riding on drakes. The adventures came with them at a different mission, and that mission was to sabotage the researchers, maybe. I don't know. I mean, you don't have to whisper. <laughs> they're the rolling. research! <laughs> they're rolling. This is scary! <laughs> All right, so... Now we're going to put a telepath in every horror story I have so he can just communicate with the audience. Like, oh, no, I don't want him to go in that... Oh, he went in the door. With all those rolls, they actually don't notice you at all. They're just really confused that this thing... No, because they see something underneath you guys at this point that is way more captivating. They had no idea what was going on until finally they look in and they start gibbering to each other in Goblin. You can understand it. Skrunk can understand it. We found the gate! Oh, they found the gate! That's, uh, that was under our platform, turns out. Oh, well, that would be the one that connects the two worlds. All right, time to, uh, ambush them. We should, stop them we should defend this. Uh, the ones that are sitting on their, uh, on their drakes, 
they pretty much bark out to the rest of their companions. So only you and Skrung are hearing this at this point. They pretty much command no, all the lesser... we to translate <laughs> yeah. while, while hearing it. Uh, they command all the lesser Blargas, which are all the wolves, to keep this area closed and to keep looking around. Keep an eye peeled for anything. Uh, he's going to go tell the Alpha. Uh, th these two are going to go tell the Alpha, and you watch as they both exit from the western side. Okay. Those two are telling now... the boss we should deal th with this... As I hear that, and as they start leaving, Wake is looking for any path he can take to stealthily ambush those two on their way. At this point, that's going to be a little difficult. Uh, the only way you could ever ambush them right now is to jump on one and just attack now. Uh, besides, you didn't hear that because it's speaking in Goblin. He can hear it, and Skrunk can hear it, is because they can understand it. Yeah, but if I if I am hearing that, I feel like I would be I would be. So you are so you are I translating be, on yeah, top I'd, of it. I'd okay. Be telepathi telepathically translating it roughly, probably not super specific, just because I don't you know uh, language don't have time to conjugate everything. I'm I'm just gonna go ahead and tell this to all of you since you can all fucking see this. By the way, mm -hmm. uh, there are ten Blar guests circled around here. The lesser ones, the uh, the greater ones that are on Drake's are the ones leaving to the western gate. They are 30 feet away and walking away with a little bit of haste because they want to go tell this so-called Alpha. Well, if we can stop them, we can at least slow down the Alpha from getting here. If we can block off the entrances. But we have to act now. And... I'm going to go ahead and say we'll do a surprise round. Everyone roll initiative. Okay. 12. 24. Hold on, it's been a second since I used Nature Sense. So instead of my uh, dex being what I'm doing, it's my wisdom, which gives me, oh wait, where was it? Plus, I'm oh, sorry, plus three. So 19 on my uh, initiative and yeah, attacks made against me and my allies have disadvantage during the First round of combat, our allies have advantage on saving throws against spells. So if they if they do anything that reacts to us, we've got advantage against them. Okay. Uh, so Wake's got a 24. Uh, you said you got a 19, yes? Yes. Okay, so that's uh, then Chromagill. Uh, Skrung got a 15. Uh, Morgan got a 12. And Renfang, God rest his soul, he rolled. he's a fucking idiot. He rolled a 1. Nice. Now, would my... Uh Initiative also count for my for my skeletal minion, or uh, yes, it would. Okay. The skeletal minion acts with you. Okay. Just and sure. the way the only reason why they didn't notice the skeleton is because the skeleton just went yeah, it just split apart and just yeah. hit the floor. So now there's a pile of bones on the floor. It's a dry bones. Wait a minute, I recognize those bones. <laughs> All right, so wake you're up first. <laughs> All right. Uh, first things first, stop those two from leaving. Uh, I'm going to... You are up... I'm going to say this. You are up 25 feet. And they are 30 feet away. And they are 30 away. feet away. Okay. Uh, so with that 30-foot reach, I'm going to use Water Whip to mm -hmm. not grab the uh, Blargast on the Drake's back, but the Drake that is further away from me and pull that Drake into the other Drake. Okay. It needs to make a deck save. Sure thing. I'm going to roll for Drake instead of Blargast. Oh, even with all that good dex, I don't think a four is going to help. Probably not. So that drake, first and foremost, gets pulled 30 feet through the other drake, back to uh, basically the foot of the platform that I'm at, and it takes 3d10 bludgeoning damage, uh, which I'm sure is very confusing, but will also... I'm assuming knock the other one off kilter slightly. Yes. I don't know. You, that will you knock can... the other one prone. Okay, cool. Six. Sixteen. Uh, Twenty. Sorry. Six, sixteen. Twenty-five points of bludgeoning damage as this Drake just gets... Whoop. Yeah, so like fucking... Flattered into the wall beneath me. Like a cartoon, you watch the Drake rubber band and hit into his friend as they go careening off to the side and hit a wall. And now everyone else acts. Yep, and now it is Chromagill's turn. We're here. All right. They don't see you. Everyone now looks up and sees Wake. <gasps> hey. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Nobody come near me! I have a volcano! 
They don't know that. I am a volcano. All right, you said there are a bunch of Blargas kind of around us. Like you have of, lesser ones, so the wolf sl- forms. Yeah, the lesser ones, but they're but they're kind of converging. They're all yeah. close to each other. So now? you have five on one side, five on the other side. Okay. Uh, is there anyone on any like either specific side of me? Like, is it like they're it, all beneath us? They're all beneath you. Okay. Um, they're you, scum, Grant. They're beneath. You. I mean, you, I know you can that. see them. So you're 25 feet above them. All yeah. the Blargas are circled around in a fi- in 10 feet. Okay, and there's just. Five and five on, yeah. on, on the other side? Right. Yes. Well, I'm going to pick, I guess, the five on my right, I, I guess. That's the, where the ones where Wake just whipped the uh, two out, uh, the two lo- lo- greater ones. All right, sure. I'll, I'll work with that squad. Uh, I dive in and cast a new spell that I haven't quite used yet. Lightning Strike. Ooh. Ooh, you nice. just fucking Thor yourself in that you Captain America in? Pretty much. Hell yeah. Uh, that You're brings the lightning. <laughs> <laughs> I bring the lightning, which does splash damage to things around it. So Ooh. them being near each other was a key point in me deciding to use this move. Glad I could help. <laughs> uh, but okay. Um, I have to... Da, 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 part of the cast must make a melee attack with a weapon against one creature within the spell's range. Uh, otherwise, the spell fails. So I'm basically going to be dive-bombing the nearest one with my fucking club. Uh, you would have to hit the center one to hit everyone else, okay. and with this, since it's a surprise round, you get advantage on hitting this thing. Excellent. Well then, swinging at it. He just got pulled into a wall, so he's... Yeah, so he's doing great. Uh, but, but that is going to be a 21 to hit. That will hit all the lessers. Excellent. Uh, with that... Probably not put away before I know. How well, that will hit the one lesser that you're aiming for. Yeah, the specific one that I'm aiming for. Uh, on hit, tough, target suffers the normal attacks effects. So I'll go ahead and roll that first, which is my big ass club, which gets a D8 plus one. D8s are so hard to find compared to D10s. It's like which which one? Yeah, what? which which one's the this one? Ooh, nice. So that's going to be a nine. Nice. Uh, and then plus my, it's plus strength, right? On top, yes. on top of that? Yes. So that's going to be three more. So 12 damage on that initial hit. And then one, uh, dealing one, uh, leaps in, bright flash, target, also dealing an additional 1d8 of electric to it, or lightning damage to it. So that's three. Uh, and a shockwave of force outward of, from the point of impact, dealing one d6 to everything within five to any enemy within five feet. Nice. That's gonna be a one. Okay. So only so a little bit of electricity shooting out to the others, but they're well, that's okay because you smack fucking the crap out of that center one. Yeah. Yeah. No. Well, not smack the crap. You crushed him. <laughs> Just flatten one, and then <laughs> lightning shoots out and zaps his friends. Yep. So everyone just stops and turns to you. <gasps> <laughs> yeah, you did just Thor the bastards. Hi. <laughs> All right, uh, it is now Skrung's turn. Skrung, seeing that he's going to... You took out one, and they're all facing him. He's going to remain stealth. Is he going to remain stealth? Oh, fuck yeah, he's going to remain stealth. You just hear a small gunshot fire, and... Silence. Masked by the sound of the thunder. Yep. He's going to take a shot at one of the Blargest. As soon as I saw that spell description, I was like, I want that one. Uh, yep, yep. Like, the one Blargast who's looking at you the closest, his head just gets blown clean off. Ooh. <laughs> uh, he's going to roll stealth for his mobile. Uh, I don't think any of the Blargasts are going to notice anything that has a 28 in stealth. It's pretty good. <laughs> Can't say they would. <laughs> uh, and that's his turn. Morgan, you're up. Okay. Linda uh, acts on your turn. So you could choose her to act or you to act on a base attack action. See, now I got more options. That's fascinating. <laughs> and I did just... I got a skeleton with a club. Or and a spear. <laughs> uh-huh. yeah, she does have a spear. I gave her a spear from the trap room. And they also don't expect a skeleton to come in. Uh, let's see. So on Chromagill's side, he killed one. Another one got headshot. Yeah, there's five. So there's three left. There's three left, and the two side. and the two graders that are off yeah. to the wall. That are off yeah, there's to the a, wall. Uh, one of the graders got pulled down to. Yeah, he's probably where closer he to me. Probably one of the splash damages. Okay. And then there's the grader that's you know his Not Drake prone. is prone, 
but it's probably going to get up and keep going. It's laying on top of him right now. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have uh, Linda go after uh, one of the other remaining lesser ones. Okay. And attack, like move and attack with the spear. She acts with your stats. My stats. Wow. Okay. That's okay. a good skeleton. That's a very good skeleton. Animate dead with, uh, based on the person who's casting it, I feel like that's the better way to do it. Okay. Okie dokie. Because I, I, I feel like the necromancer who has the capability to make the thing rise applies themselves into their creation. All right. Jesus Christ. I'm not going to argue with that homebrew if, if it helps us. Wow. Until we face a lich, and, and that's, then it's and, that, like... and that's every stat. So she's basically it's it's an imprint she, she, of my stats. Yeah, it's an imprint of your stats, but she doesn't have all the gear you have, obviously. Okay, so the armor class would be different. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay, so then for Linda, I'm gonna roll to it. Another sneak skin. Roll to Shit, I don't know this. Well, let me roll to hit first. Okay. With the spear, because I forgot what the damage. Is she throwing is. it at someone? That'd be a dex check. Spear is a d6. Spear is a d6 uh, on a d8 dex check. If it's versatile. Which it is, yeah. so yeah. Um, Dex is better, so I'm gonna have her throw the spear. She's gonna be next to me and throw the spear. Then I'm okay, gonna have her roll it. Does a 14 hit? It does. Mm, wow. The lesser blar guests are pretty weak. There's just a lot of them. Is the problem? Yeah, that they makes sense. You with numbers. And you said since it's uh, versatile, it's a D8. To D8. All right. Plus your dex. Maybe I should have focused so my main nine attack. piercing. Bigger one. Nine piercing? Okay, yeah. well, the spear is now stuck in the Blargast's side as you hear like a dog whine and it hits the floor. <laughs> Jeez, are we playing Remnant over here? Yeah, so now they're focused on the skeleton and not you at this point. They don't see you. You're, invin you're invisible still. Okay. And you still have an extra attack. That's true. It's a shame that that was her only spear. So now you just see a skeleton just go... I yeah. did it! Yeah. Now what, boss? She hasn't moved yet, so I guess I'm gonna have her. I get well, her covers, but I'm gonna have her move. Go to the last. It should be two left. Mm -hmm. So go to one and try to hit it with the club. Okay, roll the hit. So Linda just like <laughs> skeleton dancing on him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> do, 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 do. That's a thirteen. That will miss, unfortunately. That will miss. Okay. The, okay. the dog wiggles away that its back, its uh, hind leg kind of like kicks her the club just a little bit to the side. Okay. And then she moves. So that's it for her. Yep. Now I'm going to... Break. You're you're you're, yeah. you're still invisible. So yeah. I, I, um, well, I'm going to cast a different, uh, different spell mm -hmm. to break invisibility. Let me just double check on the range real quick. Where the H are you? Oh, well, you kind of used both her attacks. So that's your turn. She acts as you. Oh, she acts as me. Okay. Yeah, yeah. She is. She is taking your action. She is taking your, your action. Yeah, that was okay. that was the implication. Then let me just double. Getting... Then let me just double. Ch so do we have? A, do I have a bonus action left? You still have a bonus. Okay. Yes. Then in that case, you know, I'm just gonna ready an action for now. I'm gonna stay invisible. Uh, okay. Ready actions. Or not ready. I'm just gonna hold hold off. Yeah. So they still don't see you right yeah. now. That all they think is Linda is the the yeah, yeah. aggressor. The, the the assailant. Yeah. Uh. Off then. All right. Uh, now Ren it's Fang. Ren Fang. Ren Fang's gonna do what barbarians do best: rage. Porky, <laughs> <laughs> he's angry. He's angry. <laughs> Tongue just flying out of his mouth, slobber going everywhere. Yeah, you just watch this giant blue chunk just fall out of the sky. <laughs> Crikey, he's angry. <laughs> yeah, I think a seventeen hits. Probably. So. <laughs> and that's two d six on a greatsword, I believe. Oh, 10 plus his frenzy and his strength. Jesus. Yeah, that thing's probably gone. Yeah, uh, the Blar guess is cut in half into giblets. And he just, like, looks up. <laughs> See, this is why I argued to bring him along. And then he looks at the one that uh, Linda took a shot at. <laughs> he just takes his greatsword and throws it. Oh, no. I don't know if that's a good use of a greatsword, but I'll leave it to the barb, I guess. Uh, okay. well... You don't think it's gonna work, and then you want <laughs> Linda just like sits there as like the sword whizzes past her, and here's the Blar guess like right in front of her. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, apart from the graders, the side that side's over. Now I gotta roll initiative for them. That was a surprise round. 
Yep. All right. Uh, do we need to re-roll initiative? No, 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 not at all. Okay, not cool. you guys. I have to roll. All right. And I'm also and counting... Fit in, I'm guessing. I'm counting uh, the other side. Like, I counted them as swarms, so there's two swarms of Blargast. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. To keep this simple. Okay, unfortunately, Renfang, because you are a fucking stupid, small, slow child, that's group one... But he's so big. He's a beefy small child. <laughs> yep. Group... Buffy Smurf. Uh, he's gone. Now it's uh, the greater Blargast. Like four foot tall bodybuilders, just <laughs> tiny, but it is all muscle. I have nothing to prove. <laughs> big on the inside. These guys, you got the drop on these guys pretty good. They rolled pretty poorly. All right, we're back up the list. Wake. All right. Uh, the... All the all the lesser Blargast on your end are gone. Cool. That leaves me a path to get to that greater Blargast that's still trying to get up from under his drake. Yep. So I'm going to do that. Uh, I will leap forward over the remaining greater that's collecting himself beneath me and rush over to that second one and just attempt to stab the shit out of him while he's being pinned to the ground by a drake. Okay. Roll the hit. Dynamic and Ooh, nat 20 first off. Okay. Uh, uh, roll your damage. Right, take them this spear with two hands. There we go. That's seven Gives it a plus. Good stare. That's fifteen plus five twenty on that crit damage. Hellish rebuke. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> the spear gets set on fire and it, it like blows back at you. <laughs> Oh dear. Oosh. How much? Uh, is, you have roll is a dex. Rebuke a save? Yes. Yeah, roll a dex save. You would take half the damage. Well, I'm a monk, so if I save, I take none. Uh, dex save is a uh, 27. I yeah, he can't beat that, so you take half the damage. I take zero damage. I'm a monk. Mm. <laughs> nice try. Spin, spin, spin. Kick him in the face. <laughs> Uh, da, 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 da. Does a 15 hit the greater? No, it does not. All right, so I missed with my kick, but my second attack, as I bring the spear back down, what cracker? That is a 21. That will hit. All right. The greater's got some high AC. Drake's not so much. Uh, the secondary crack on top of the skull does uh, 10 damage. Okay. <laughs> And the blar the blargus, you watch as the blargus. So like basically how the greater blargus look is they're like werewolves but goblins. Yeah. So the greater one like you crack him in the head. He's on the floor. He's knocked prone. You watch his head unnaturally spin 180 and look at you. Are you finished? He said in common. I do a spin flip between like ba basically making it so that I am between him and the doorway. Mm -hmm. uh, for now, yeah. Not really. <laughs> ah. All right, uh, Chromagill's turn. Okay, there's another greater one near me, right? Or yeah, you got the two. The greater one that Wake just punched on and the other one that's on the floor pinned under his uh, drake. All right, okay. Uh, yeah, you're by the one that I water whipped into the wall. Yeah. Well, see, seeing that opportunity, I go ahead and uh, lift my big-ass axe. I haven't used this in a while. Let's tempt fate and see if I can hit him really, really Oh, hard. God, metal. <laughs> Oh, this thing scares me. So before I can even swing to attack it, I need to first do an <laughs> athletics check to see if I swing it properly at all and have to clear a 15. Ooh, I do. Nice. Right, so we are so we are swinging it right. He is knocked prone, so you get advantage to hit. Hell yeah. Well then. It's already pretty good. We will take that. Uh, that is going to be a 24 to hit. That will absolutely I hit. I feeling that's going to do it. So with my big, big ass axe, for those of you who weren't there when I got it, uh, that gives me two d12s for damage on that baby. So mm, let's chunky go damage. ahead and see what we get with that. That's gonna be ten plus my strength bonus of thirteen damage coming in on that guy. Thirteen Just damage, straight in on him. Clang! You, you, your axe gets stuck in this man's arm, and you feel like it's gonna cleave through. But you hear it clang against where his bone should be, and it stops. <laughs> Careful, they're durable. Hellish rebuke. Oh boy. Roll deck save. 
hot, 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 hot. Oh, I have a good feeling about my six. <laughs> You're taking full damage on this. All right. And it's fire damage, too. Oh, that's going to be hot. Six, eight. Oh, Jesus. That's 15 points of fire damage Woo! back at you. Toasty. All right. Do some quick mental math here. Uh, when you look at your axe, when the flames uh, douse over you, your flame almost... its It doesn't appear like it's breaking apart, but you know how paper starts to burn away and it has that black char to it? Yes. The tip of your blade starts to get that as it's touching its flesh. Ooh, all right. Uh, luckily, I have a bonus attack, but I'm not going to chance the super axe again. I'm just going to swing with my... Well, Hellish Rebuke is a one-time reaction. So. Oh, is it? Yeah. Yeah, you know what? Double or nothing. Let's go. Let's let's throw that big oh axe again. Girl. Spoken oh like a true girl. gambling man. Oh my girl. And I do not swing it properly on my second attempt. Oh, girl. Real. This is completely yeah, missed. That, 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 that charred remain. Like, you're looking at your axe. Everyone watches as Chromegill is now staring at his axe before he was about to take the swing. Nothing's happening to his blade, only he sees it. Mm. Uh, well, and the Blargas's eyes are growing, uh, glowing red. That's both of my uh, attacks, but with a bonus action, I'm going to use Warden's Recovery. Uh, I can spend a number of hit die up to my con mod and add uh, that to each roll and regain hit points equal to the total. I'm going to get myself back up a little bit. Okay. So while you're calculating yeah. that, we'll move on to someone else. Uh, it is fun. now number one's turn, the one that you punch, uh, Wake. All right. I stand, and I, I stand ready, waiting for him to get up from under the... Beast. You watch as his hand holds up. He gingerly, like, plucks a little bit of the nape of the drake. <laughs> throws it out the side. That was cruel and unnecessary. And he, on heel, Nosferatu standing back up at you. He looks at the place where you chuck the spear into his body. He looks at the gaping hole and he touches it. His blood turns to lava, and he looks to you. And he runs at you. Oh, funny trick. What's your AC? Uh, my armor class is a 20. Unfortunately, with a 16 plus 7, yeah, that's hitting you. Yeah, that will hit. Typically. Uh, I that, for 11, by the way. That's cool. Uh, his claw, like, his, his claws, the lava forms into an extension of his claws, and he rakes at you. Hurts! <laughs> And with the rake attack, buh, buh, buh. Uh, that is four plus five, so nine points of damage right there. All right. And he gets a second swing. Oh, man, even with a seven, a 14 is not hitting you. Nope. So nine total so far, unless he has a third attack. Uh, he, uh, roll me a wisdom save as his eyes glow when he looks at you. Seventeen. Seventeen? Uh, oh, wait, eighteen, sorry. You almost felt like uh, that rake attack that hit you, it almost felt like the acid was, the, the, the lava was bleeding through the rest of your veins and going into your arm, making it that you couldn't hold on to your spear. But then you realize that, like, you blink, and then you notice that there's a double vision that's there, and it's not actually happening, and you break through his illusion. I've been through this before. All right. Uh, next up is Skrung. No one has noticed Skrung yet. Good he's on gonna, him. He's going to look at the one who uh, took a shot at Wake. He's going to take aim using a chromatic orb and using ice. Oh, he does care. <laughs> Fuck! This Not a nat 20, but that's a good crit. Oh, he crits on 19? Yeah. God, good for him. Crits on a 19. Here we go. Got 11 proof criticals. Yep. He actually took away one of his ASI from proof critical. That is... God. That is 24 ice damage. Jesus. The reason why you snapped out of it is because when you looked at this thing's eyes, you were kind of lost at its gaze, and then this thing lurches <laughs> forward as an icicle of, uh, as a giant spear of ice now juts out of the back of his head. And you look at Skrung, just go, 
I, 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 I nod. He's going to remain in sniping position, even though now, yeah, the Blargast took notice. He knows he's there. With a matter, you, you got a, you got a thing. You got a, you got something. You, I can take care of it for you. Morgan, it's your turn. Okay. Uh, I'm going to break out of invisibility and cast Branding Smite on myself. And let me just lower that slot count here. And I'm going to attack with my pistol on the Blargast attacking wake. Okay. Greater Blargast, take a shot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Does a 22 hit? Yes, it does. Okay. Shoot, my D6? So that's eight. And since I hit with Branding Smite, I get to roll 2D6 Radiant Damage. Ooh. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you to times that by two. So eight plus... Eight. Hold on. Eight plus. Uh, well, no. The first bullet is just regular eight. Oh, okay. This is the radiant. So eight and six. Eight plus sixteen. So twenty-four total. Twenty-four points of damage. So you watch as the spike juts through his head as Ugh. the first bullet goes through, and then that pillar of ice turns radiant and starts to glow light, and you watch his entire face like start to singe. <laughs> ah! Like oh, he's oh, actually now, feeling pain on that one. Now, now you got. Other things like, oh man, you're not no. Mm. Yeah, that uh, you watch as like a good portion of his flesh kind of like melts away down the middle like a candle. Okay, and I start. And the back of his and the, wherever the where his wolf hair is on the back of his head is now singed on fire. Mm. But he's still standing. And I still have my extra attack, so I'm gonna load a chromatic round. Put at six ammo. Roll to hit. What do you claim this uh, ammo to be? Oh, I can claim it now. Yeah. Um, shoot. Well, there, what were the damage types again? Because I remember I had a roll. For ice, that. ice uh, fire, ice, thunder, thunder, force, and acid. Let's do uh, force. Just and... some concu concussive force on this. <laughs> just yeah, pure right? arcane energy. <laughs> that is a That's what I assume force is. All right, flavor that. Well, to hit. Oh, to hit, yeah. To hit, not the damage. And then... That's six damage. Six damage? All right, not enough to kill, but that's a good chunk of damage you got on him. Yeah. This guy just got fucking hit with a tornado of magic, and he doesn't know what the fuck is left and right at this point. Uh, All right, Linda's still standing there, and now it is... Uh, it is now. Wait, Linda acts on your turn, right? Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. Linda's still standing there. Okay. I'm just. I'm not. I'm not saying she's moving. I'm just saying she's standing gotcha. there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for her to do something, so she's just remaining. Uh, Renfang's turn. Wait, no. Renfang goes after this. Go angry, lad. Yeah. So, uh. Oh wait, this is the group of the lesser Blar guests now. Notice oh, every all one. that's mm -hmm. happening. They go through the center of the platform, and you now watch as like the they all guys, swarm on Linda. Oh they all God. swarm on Linda. A skeleton! Whoa! <laughs> Got it! She's got a bone to pick with you. Yeah, they hit. So this acts as a 5d6. Okay. The swarm. Oh no, the, every wolf wants a bone. <laughs> oh no, they're all gonna bury a different piece. Alright, so that's three twelve that's uh three sixes. So the number of the beasts. Happy October, 18, everybody. 19, 20, <laughs> 21 plus their attack bonus, so that's 25 points of damage. Okay. Linda... Does she still have... Does she share my hit points if she doesn't share No, she does not. She does not, okay. She's still just a Skellington. She is just a Skellington. Yeah, so it's just the ASI she shares. Yes. Okay. She... You watch as they rip her entire lower half off. She is just an upper torso, still standing. <sighs> She's had a rough afterlife. And uh, now it is number two's turn. He's literally the one next to Chromagill. Yeah, I, I had a feeling this guy hadn't acted yet. He had to be coming up somewhere. He's gonna use his movement to stand up, and he grabs the he grabs the Drake by the back of the neck. Oh hi! Snaps it and uses hey. it as a club. Wait a minute. These guys are not very friendly to their pets. They're demons, man. I mean, they could still, you know, understand that the, the, as a the creature, sanctity of life. <laughs> the, the creature itself is still a good tool, and it seemed pretty, you know. <laughs> That's like me using a hammer and then breaking the hammer in half and deciding it would be better as two throwable objects. Yeah. 19. A 19? That's going to hit. 
He's gonna hit you with a bludgeoning damage of... Man, two nat ones. He hits you with two plus six. So, eight. Eight damage. points of bludgeoning damage as he whacks you across the face with the, with his drake. Oof. He slapped you with his dog. He takes... I'll kick your ass with Charles. He takes... <laughs> <laughs> The juggernaut, bitch, in case anyone uh, uh, did not catch that. Oh, God. Oh. How old are we again? Fuck. That, 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 that was peak early us. I was going to say, that was one of my f the first YouTube videos that I was like, oh, I have to share this with people. Apparently, so, Ant knows the guy that made that. Really? Oh, yeah. nice. Uh, second attack, he's going to uh, take what dripping blood there is out of his drake and break it onto his hand, going for an attack. Oh, Oh, no. Oh, what a fucking shitty roll. That's a nine to hit you. Oh, that doesn't hit. Doesn't hit at all, huh? All right. Uh, roll me a wisdom save as he looks at you with glowing red eyes. 18. Beat it by two. You watch as your axe was like burning away like paper and you just realize that's not how metal works. Wait a minute. Metal isn't paper. <laughs> All right, and we're back up the list. Wake. Uh, we wait, top. did Ren Fang get the? Oh, Red Fang didn't go. You're right. Barbarian. Hold I on, take wait. back what I was saying. But Easy in a way. moment, I will. Ren, Ren Fang just like fucking like. If he was skipping. Gendy Kratikovsky fucking primals his way <laughs> over to the sk over to the lessers. Just need to deal with that swarm that's eating our skeleton real quick. Yeah. Well, with a 19 plus two, he's hitting. He Ren. might hit Linda too, but <laughs> no, no, he's he's got it. He's pretty good. Controlled rage. Yeah, controlled rage. <laughs> good, good. All right, fourteen on the first Sith. attack. You Second attack. I hate it. Are Siths just super saiyans? I mean, in a manner of speaking. <laughs> <laughs> they just uh, he hate only takes speak. out, unfortunately, one uh, lesser Blargas. And that's his turn. Now we're back up to wake. You were talking all that good shit to say not. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, got a thing there. Hold on, I'll, I'll I'll take care of it for you. And I start spinning around my spear to like smack the icicle further into uh, further back into his skull. Uh, modified twenty. That will hit. All right. So, where's my D8? We crack out. 13 points of damage as... Fluff how you want to kill him. So I spin around my quarterstaff and I slap the icicle across his face, basically spinning his neck like 180 degrees until his head just kind of rolls off and falls to the ground. And the body lays limp on the floor. <laughs> All right, I think I took care of it. It's... I just turn the head to like look at the body. <laughs> Got that ugly thing off you. There you go. It's like anyway. Kong. It's like King Kong playing with the T-Rex. <laughs> yeah. It its jaw. There was a disgusting lump on your neck. I got rid of it for you. Turned out it was your head. Anyway, uh, I'm going to go see ya. And I begin to march over to the lesser Blargas with my movement. And I take aim at... They act as a swarm, so you can hit all of them. Oh, all right. That works. Then I'm going to dynamic entry into the pile of them uh, with a 17 to hit. That will hit. Dynamic entry! Uh, nine points of damage. All right. It's like clatter through a bunch of them. Yeah, you pretty much just like rip your, uh, you rip your hand into a good chunk of two of them. Uh, one's still standing, but the other one hits the floor. And then I spin my quarterstaff with my second and just kind of do a big old whirlwind, swirl a wind uh, with a, a, damn, another 17 to hit. That will hit. Spinny whirling dervish wake. Uh, three plus five, eight damage. All but one Blargas remains. <sighs> Hi. Ah! I don't speak dog, demon. That was goblin. him screaming. Ah! Uh, Chromagill, you're up. All right, staring, you have, uh, staring down the greater one that's still with me. Yep, uh, that has his drake as a club. Hmm. 
I mean, so really, mental it's mental image is just hilarious. It's it's not an excellent gamble, but it is just the most damage I can do per turn. I'm swinging again with my big ass axe. Go for it. Ooh, that's definitely gonna be. Uh, that definitely crosses the threshold. Threshold had more on the die than I needed to pass. Uh, all right, will a modified twenty? Uh, or no, not a modified twenty. Uh, a seventeen. A seventeen hit. That will. It will. Excellent. Uh, then let's go ahead well, and, big dice. and smack this boy with my two d12s. Whoo! Max damage on one of those. Holy shit! Uh, so that's going to be fifteen plus. Uh, that's eighteen altogether to with that swing. Oh, good hit. Whoosh. Very good. Clang. Hit. <laughs> <laughs> Come on! <laughs> How'd you like that? And then, uh, hey, you know what? I don't think I've really used this spell yet. I'm gonna do uh, with my extra attack. I'm gonna hit him with some earthen might. Nice. Which that has the added bonus. Ahem. Uh, have to do a melee uh, spell. On hit, target suffers the normal attacks and the primal power of or Earth courses through my body, dealing an additional 1d8 and giving me plus one to my AC for the next attack. So basically, builds me up, hits him even harder. But I think it's going to miss. It does a 14 hit. That fails. Ah, well, I had all this earthen power in my club, and then it just kind of swings right past him. All right. <sighs> that oh, hello. When you swing your axe, he's looking up at... Okay, so... I'm gonna have to fluff it for this one because he triggers something, unfortunately. That's fine. He grabs the, he cups the bottom end of the of the entire blade. As the blade sinks into his hand, he just holds it there, looking at you with a grin. Hey, what you uh, what you got there? Axe. Pal. Just uh, just to clarify, for this second attack, I was swinging my club. So if that's what. Right, he's, right. His so club. If it's, so if it's gonna do something to the weapon, it's not doing it. Oh no, he's legs. not doing the weapon. He's doing something to you. He I looks figured, at. He looks at you. And he smiles. Bye bye. Roll a I'm, wisdom save. But I'm not going anywhere. Uh, ba -ba, that's 18. You felt your body as if it was being like just pushed away. Like you just watched the entire world around you just like vanish. Almost like you and passed through Wayland's realm once again. Fell into the sunken place. But you like whatever you did, you held on to what was tethering you, which was your club. He tried to use Dementia Door on you. No, I still have my club. Yep, you still hung on to the club and fished yourself out of his Dimension Door. <laughs> nice try. Oh, shit. <laughs> Eep. Eep. Uh, next is ahead, number one, well, which you killed, so he's gone. Uh, now it is Skrung's turn. Skrung sees the final one that's just sitting there in front of Wake. Uh, in front of Chromagill. No, no, the lesser. Oh, the lesser, the final lesser. Yeah, he takes he takes aim at the final lesser with a firebolt. Misses, unfortunately. Ooh. The the lesser actually snatches the bolt out of its mouth and throws it away. <laughs> wow. Son of a bitch! I don't even know. Oh man, has Superman ever done that? Caught a bullet in his mouth and just spat it out like I it was bet nothing. He has. That's so cool. Um, in the 40s cartoons. Skrung is going to... Spit out that bullet with the force of another bullet. <laughs> yeah. Skrung's going to just take a knife and throw it at him as an offhand. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah, just... <laughs> I was going to say that it's the knife I gave him. Yeah. It's like that scene from Korgoth. We got you. <gasps> <laughs> oh, I really wish that show went beyond the pilot. Uh, I am fucking absolutely astounded because he rolled a two but with his decks combined it was enough to kill huh i'm gonna pull that out for flavor i'm gonna pull the knife out just put it back in my bandolier hell yeah after it falls down you're welcome morgan's turn all right i'm gonna spend some ectoplasm to get my spell slots back and i'm going to cast branding smite on myself again Used, and then I'm going to fire with my pistol at the greater bar guest attack. From Thank you. I was going to say, of course, the whole turn went with you just like, oh, I'm going to fix myself up while this guy's still holding my club. Guys! And a 19. <laughs> oh, a 19 will that will hit. All right. So first the regular damage with the bullet. That's eight. And then the radiant damage. 
That's six times two, 12, so that's 20 damage total. How do you want to end this? <laughs> hmm. How do you wish for this bullet to hit this man? Uh, I, let's see. Fatally. Well, obviously. <laughs> fatally. Ricochets off of everything. Uh, I actually want to aim right where the base of the spine and the neck connect. So basically, uh, Morgan fires his pit, fires the kill. pistol, the bullet lodges itself right at the hypothalamus of the skull. You know, the pressure point of the skull. Mm. And then with the radiant damage expanding, you just see its head just just swell and swell and just... When it explodes... Kenshiro style. Unlike yours, the we- however, unlike how you killed yours, the blood hangs in the air like time has frozen. It's still holding on to Chromagill's, uh, Chromagill's club. Hey. But now you're feeling as if he's being pulled with the club. You rip it out of his hand... <laughs> The air rips open behind him and opens up, and he returns back to the realm of whence he came. Looks like you're the one who went bye-bye this time. (laughs) So I think we have the room to ourselves for right now. Until the Alpha gets wind that something's going wrong. I'm sure sure the commotion in here will will rattle up something, but maybe we should destroy the doorway. I like that idea. Uh, as you say that, you got. I need everyone here to roll me a perception check. Okay. You know how there's a ga- there's a small gap for the staircase to go up towards. Uh, mm-hmm. Seven. Seven. Okay. Perception. It's funny because I'm still on top of that. Perception's <laughs> a uh, nineteen what? for me. Nineteen. Five for me. Oh no. So you're hearing all those slams. Boom. Boom. It's coming from below you. And then you look off to the side. Uh, you don't think the alpha that they're speaking of is this hairy as one really extended, long, thin, pipe-like claw comes up from underneath where the staircase is, followed by a second one, then a third, then a fourth. Drumming in fifth, the deep. Sixth, seventh, eighth, a lot ninth, of legs, tenth, eleventh, sir. twelfth. It seems endless with all the legs coming up. There is many. There, that's a many. That, that's, that's a many. That is many. And that's where we'll end the session for today. No! Okie dokie. Linda! I'm sure she'll be fine. <laughs> Linda! Got Evil Dead the musical in my head now. Before we go, we have art. Stefan, do you know how the art works? There's a... Yeah. Well, I mean, there's... Oh, no, sure. no, go back. Go back to the main camera. Cause I, cause I think there's a folder the, on the top. There's a folder. Yeah, we've there. actually changed how we've done it a little bit, but uh. So start from number one. All right, let me hey. get, let me get TFS at the table going. Look at that big old ghost. Yeah, Wanna be a ghost this year? A, a punch ghost. A punch ghost. A punch do ghost. It. I believe that's Ziga. It is Ziga, yes, but I would like to give proper credit where credit is due. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But since we can identify the artist already, thanks, Ziga. Thank you, I Ziga. Yep, from uh, Ziga Exeron. It's that time of year again, and Nedra is already preparing her costume. Look at it go. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. Next up. Wake. Ooh. Spirit hand. Where'd it go? Oh, no. Don't tell me. I this didn't. is, I, I can read this one. This yeah. is Daisuke Draws, 1998. Oh, there we go. Thank you. I, unfortunately, I forgot to actually reblog that one on here, but thank you all the same. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah, Dice K. I love the, love the ghosty hand. Yeah, no, yeah. I love the, I love the ghost hand going into it. Like, that's actually a really well, that's a really good use of using your, um, uh, your medium. Mm-hmm. That's using your noggin. Thank you so much. More Next up. <laughs> this is, oh, come on. Wake in space. Bangarang Aliko. Considering yeah, this, the universe. <laughs> this is like Wake just ate a pot brown. He's like, whoa, I'm made of have stars. You, have you ever thought about oh, man, how you cool. can... Wake, you ever tried DMT? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this is Wake realizing he can feel his blood traveling through his hand the first time he gets high. How is this possible? I can see the universe in my hand, man. It's like it's, we're all part of it. There's little universes in every cell of my body. Every atom I have is another universe, and I could be living in one of them. And then it, it, then it bleeds into that one. We last left our heroes. Cue, <laughs> oh, no. Cue the men in black ending melody. All is lost! All is lost! Don't I'm, touch that! <laughs> I am the nucleus of my own life. <laughs> <laughs> 
Wait, who is this by again? <laughs> this is uh, this is Bangarang. Bangarang. Okay. Bangarang. Thought I recognized the the art style, but very good stuff. Thank you, Bangarang. Thank you. A uh, next. Hey. Hey. Daisuke draws. Oh, once again. Once again, Daisuke draws. There are two pieces of this. I, mm. I this isn't my show. Nick, why don't you take us away on this yeah, one? Yeah, this I believe was uh, your character. Hiram there. Kane. Yeah, Hiram Kane from the uh, WTF one shot ah. of the. Uh, uh, if, if you missed the uh, one shot last week, it's a prototype for a system I've been working on based on the Apocalypse World system. This is uh, my my going title for it right now is Hope of the Universe. It's just basically anime tropes, the RPG. Mm -hmm. Had a lot of fun with it last week. And this is Brian's character, Hiram Kane, getting ready to shoot up some boys. <laughs> Good stuff. Yep. Thank you kindly, Dice Gate. There's a second one, though. Ooh, a second one. Hey! hey! I recognize that little Tango anywhere. He's Tango! He's my little kid buddy, and he's just, he just comes in and he's just doing yuck, yuck, yuck jokes. I but still don't know where he gets that bone saw from. <laughs> Anime magic. Ask not There's what? Where, where his objects of power come from. <laughs> There's a reason why anime bullshit is a basic move. <laughs> yeah, it's just part it's just part of the move list right there. Awesome. Thank you so much, Daisuke. Hell yeah. Next up. Whoa! Ooh. Ooh. I'd, I'd play that 16-bit game. From uh, Justin uh, Nikov. Uh, I'm the, the name. Oh, Justin Nikov time. Uh, it, no uh, message, Justin just Nikov TFS. time. I like it. I, I look at it as this is Wake if he was in, like, was it Blasphemous? I was going to say Blasphemous. This, yeah. I, I, say I can see Wake or... as, like, a Blasphemous boss there. Penitent one. There's a fish here. He awakes with his ghosty hat. Be not jump! <laughs> I like how even though his ghost hand is behind him, you can still tell that's what he's got with the cool aura coming off. I also like how it looks like he has his dad flaps on his mustache there. Ah. Oh, that's right. It is. There is the dad flaps he's there. He's got dad flaps. That's <laughs> what happens to mermen when they uh, <laughs> have children. They reach a certain age. <laughs> no, only when they have kids. Yeah. <laughs> the dad flaps. <laughs> I've spawned. <laughs> Oh, shit! Yo! Yo! Oh, man. That's awesome. Uh, let me add a little bit of taste to that pizza there. This is from uh, Scandran in 01. I love it, Scandran. He, his eyes look so creepy and sunken in, but it's so good. That's what everyone sees, Grant! <laughs> <laughs> I know. Chromagill doesn't see himself. I, he sees the world. It's true. I keep forgetting that his face is just kind of It's hollow, hollow. on the inside. <laughs> Is the brain on the cap? I never really have quite. No, the out. brain is the whole body. Yeah, you okay. are. You are your own I nervous am, system. I, okay, that's fair. Yeah. So, so if he loses a part of his body like he did in this one, does he like forget some things? <laughs> I forgot <laughs> math. You know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna fluff it. Is that next time? Next time you lose a limb, you're gonna forget something. <laughs> next time I lose a limb, I lose what, a language. What's your name again? Oh no, those are my childhood memories. <laughs> woke. I'll never. Woke. <laughs> <laughs> Hello there. You. <laughs> It's, I'm sure you know, we've met. I've just forgotten everything about you. Maybe that's why your race only calls people by what they look like. It's just easier. It's a contingency plan. It's easy to lose pieces of you in the in the forest. Yeah, I love bird that. comes up, they pick off part of your cap. Oh, no. <laughs> there goes my father. I'll never find my sovereign again. Thank you, Scandranon. Next up. Hey, Renfang. <laughs> hey, Seto Sister. Thank you for Renfang. It looks like he's just trying to scare you. Like, I love. Ah! He looks like a fucking Hanna Barbera character. He looks like if a Hanna Barbera character was a monster, uh, was a uh, Dragon Quest mob. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, it does look like a Dragon Quest mob. All right, Ren Fang, to make yourself look bigger, why don't you just put your arms out like this, and you'll be even more intimidating. He's, he's... See, then he wiggles his fingers like, Nah, you lost it. It's gone. <laughs> Fuck it. Yeah. Like, Scoob, let's get out of here. Oh no. <laughs> put it, put it, he's a he's a guest character on the Herculoids. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck yeah! Thank you so much. I think that's it, or am yeah. I wrong? That's that's all. That's I in think the list. that's all of them. All right. Well, well that's... thank you all for joining us here today. We'll see you guys next time at the table. Spiders, Later, wonders, spiders. <laughs>